It is 72 degrees here in Oakland. A good crowd on hand. And in the background, I hear, I'm sure you hear the Oakland fans reacting to their Oakland A's. They love them here. The Yankees want to nail it down tonight and go on to World Series, but the Oakland A's say not just yet. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Garagiola. As always, alongside me, Tony Kubek. And, Tony, the reaction of these fans, first of all, it may be a tenth man in the stands for these Oakland A's. It sounds like a very tightly enclosed disco place, doesn't it, with the music in the background. And one of the best ovations we've ever heard from a manager right here. He got it in New York from the Yankee fans. He got it again today from the Oakland A's fans. It may not be a full house, but they're going to be very loud. They are very loud, very enthusiastic. It should be a great evening. Now, uh, we talked about the Yankees wanting to nail it down. They're using Rigetti. Rigetti won eight games, lost four. He's a strikeout pitcher. He averages 7.6 7 strikeouts per game. So it's going to be tough for these Oakland A's. It is. They don't have a whole lot going for them. Of course, Rigetti coming back with proper rest. Neither the Goose nor Ron Davis were used in game number two, so they will be rested. If Russell is needed, he can come out of the bullpen. The Yankees have been hitting 370 as a team, and trying to talk over what you're in behind is getting more and more difficult. I think we'll find a good ball game out of this because Matt Keogh, he is their hope today. He is 2-0 and over since the Yankees this year. So, it's going to be a big night. Let's go to the PA announcer. Now, this time, ladies and gentlemen, we're happy to introduce the Hall of Fame shortstop, former manager and club executive, and former president, and now board chairman of the American League, Mr. Joe Cronin who will present the ninth annual Joe Cronin Award. Mr. Cronin. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great privilege and pleasure on behalf of Lee McPhail, the president of the American League and the owners of the American League, to make this outstanding achievement presentation. How do you spell relief? F-I-N-G-E-R-S. Raleigh Fingers. I've been told by Bob Fischel, Lee McPhail's assistant, that he's made 272 saves more than anybody else in Major League history. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Fingers. I'm glad you all still remember him. <laughs> thank you. I'd like to thank the Office of the American League for this award, and I'd also like to thank Joe Cronin for taking the time to come here today to present me with it. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention to the center field area as the 12th District Marine Corps Color Guard is presenting the colors for tonight's national anthem. of our national anthem as recorded by the Oakland Symphony under the direction of Mr. Calvin Simmons.
the plane of the National Anthem. We're getting ready here. Dave Rigetti for the Yankees. He won eight and lost four. Matt Keogh won ten and lost six for Oakland. We'll be right back after these messages. From Oakland, the Yankees and the Oakland A's. We have a... Bit of a delay here with a ceremonial first pitch. What a shot at this beautiful Bay Area. Tony, I'm not about to identify rivers or bridges. Wouldn't touch it for anything. It's a nice day inside the ballpark. You will have some sun and shadows at Oakland Bay or San Francisco Bay. Somewhere out there in this area is the Golden Gate Bridge. <laughs> If you take it right off the George Washington Bridge, take Route 80, it'll take you right to that bridge right there, one of the most beautiful in the world, the Golden Gate Bridge. There are the shadows that Tony's talking about. You think they'll help Rigetti or Keel? It'll help both of them for a few innings, throwing out of that bright center field sun through the bright spots across the infield. Rigetti is a very hard thrower. We remember him, Joe, where we had him in a game in Kansas City where the radar gun had him at 97 miles an hour in stretches. Also, he has one of the best straight change of paces in all of the American League with a good curve and a good slider. If he is going to have a problem, it will be with control. That is Clyde King behind him, the pitching coach of the Yankees. The A's have taken the field. They love their Oakland A's here. Here is the Yankee lineup that Matt Keogh will be facing. Jerry Mumphrey leads it off in center field. Milburn will be at shortstop batting second. Dave Winfield in left field batting third. Reggie Jackson is the designated hitter. He still has a little bit of a problem with the leg. Gamble is in right field. Greg Nettles is at third base. Bob Watson is at first base. Batting eighth is catcher Cerrone, and batting ninth is Willie Randolph at second base. Matt Keel, his father Morty, Marty, a far, former major leaguer. Matt is the young man who had a year that he liked to forget. Two wins, 17 losses. He lost 14 consecutive ball games, and he just kept going on out there. And then Art Fowler and Billy Martin got him and made him a pitcher. Learned a little screwball, learned to throw strikes and not be a nibbler. He is 2-0 versus the Yankees this year. There you see his stats. Not a very impressive ERA at 3.40. Joe, with the Yankee power, which has been somewhat dominant, especially game two, an important stat that you don't see there in 140 and 30 innings pitch, he has allowed 11 home runs. His Oakland staff has allowed 80. In this series, the Yankees as a team are hitting at 371, 26 for 70. They have two home runs, 16 runs about an end. Oakland's hitting 246. Well, we've had pretty good defensive baseball in this series. He'll be the defense behind Matt Keogh, Ricky Henderson in left, Wayne Murphy in center, Tony Armas in right, Mickey Klutz in third, Rob Pietro to the shortstop, Dave McKay at second, Calvin Moore at first base, Jeff Newman catching today, and of course Matt Keogh. The A's in the clubhouse and around the batting cage were looking for positive things to think about and talk about. There you can see the dimensions. It is usually 400 at dead center field and 375 in the alleys, but they have a temporary fence put out there from left center to right center, which is put in for football, so the dimensions in those areas are three feet shorter. Like the umpires walked out with the head of the umpires for the American League, Dick Butler, before the ball game, and they talked about what might happen if fans reach over the fence. There's the fence that we're talking about. That's right the there. permanent fence now, Joe, which has always been your eight feet high. As you go farther toward left center field, you will see a screen fence. That's the one the umpires were looking at, where if Dave Winfield or a Murphy jumps up against the fan can reach in the field of play and maybe obstruct their view or knock it out of their hands. That yellow line you see is the important one the umpires will be watching. Anything above that is out the ballpark. Here is Jerry Mumphrey to lead it off. Five for nine, two runs scored, one double. He's hitting five Look out. six, and there's the first commercial of the game. You're not going to run us out of the ballpark. Well, only Keo knows, but he really flips Jerry Mumphrey. Cerrone took one off the edge of the hell batting helmet in game two, and with that sunny background, he did not react and get out of the way in a hurry. 
Mumphrey is still walking around, as you can see. He knows what that message was. And you might recall that, oh, not too many weeks ago when Reggie Jackson was knocked down, that Mr. Steinbrenner said if his hitters get knocked down, he might consider legal action. And Mumphrey takes a hard cut at the very first one that's in the strike zone. And we've got what is known as extracurricular activity going. Well, be we interesting can't, to see what happens when Ruggetti does. We can't accuse Keogh of throwing at anybody. First pitch of the ball game, be silly to do that. I didn't say he threw at him, Tony, but I guarantee you he wanted to get high and tight and be as close to his chin without hitting, hitting him as, po as possible, and he got there. Billy Martin is one man's or Earl Weaver or another. There are many others who do not want their pitchers to purposely to throw at hitters. They feel if retaliation starts, you end up getting a kid like Ricky Henderson hurt or Dwayne Murphy, but there is an understanding, an unspoken word. Keogh averages 2.9 walks per nine innings. He's got a pretty good idea where the baseball is thrown. And that's the message right there. Curveball, strike one. Strike three, rather. It's an exceptional curveball. He also has an excellent screwball, as we told you. Fowler wants him to get ahead of hitters, the most important thing. Right back off his leg. It'll be a base hit. Picholo runs it down, but Milburn is on. He was five for nine, six for ten. That's a 600 average. It seems like, and well, you can go back to World Series postseason play, there always seems a guy who quietly gets no publicity and gets a lot of base hits. We'll see Milburn's hit off the leg of Keo right here. Right off the right ankle. Remember Bobby Richardson who set the RBI records in the 60 World Series. A Cressetti on the Ruth teams had a big World Series one year. Milburn has really got on base a lot, Joe. That he has. Here is Winfield, two for eight, two RBIs, two runs scored, one double, a stolen base, a 250 average, and a tremendous catch that he made off Armas to rob him of a home run. Joe, the Yankee lineup, we're seeing a late change. Reggie Jackson, who pulled a calf muscle, was in the lineup up until just a little while ago. So now Bobby Mercer has taken his place as the DH. He's on the on-deck circle, so it will be Mercer. Down the left field line, but foul. One ball, one strike, one out. Mumf uh, Mumphrey started this game being called out on strikes. First pitch was a high, tight fastball, and Milburn singled hard off Keogh's leg. And now it's Winfield. Joe, this Oakland A's outfield has gotten a lot of publicity, and rightfully so. Some say the best in baseball. But the best outfielder in this game is the man at bat, I think, Dave Winfield. What a play he made in Yankee Stadium. He's been in the middle of some things, too. Game one, that slide. Reggie just beating out the double play. At the game-winning RBI in game two. One ball, one strike. One out. Hit hard, left field. Right at him, Henderson. What a bullet. You will not see too many balls hit harder than that, Joe. That was an absolute bullet. So here is Bobby Mercer. Murphy started to come in a couple of steps, and then the ball just took off and went all the way out to him. Watch the intense concentration and power. Head down, the follow through, tremendous hand action. He's trying to pull it to either sink or take off. What a good reaction shot. Bobby Mercer. All one. One ball, no strikes. There's the strike. One and one to count. Matt Keogh. They need a tough game from Keogh. 
Mercer making his first appearance in the playoffs here, the League Championship Series. Milburn a good lead. It gets away from the catcher Newman. Milburn to second. Call it a strike, an appeal from Keel. They asked Jeff Newman to look down at the third base umpire, Vic Voltaggio. Call it a strike, said Mercer did go around. There's Voltaggio, third base umpire. Like he tried to throw a curveball. He overthrew a curveball or a slider. Newman has a ricochet off his glove and chest protector. You know, I think it's important, Joe, that this first inning so that the Yankees don't get ahead because they've got the goose rested down there and Davis rested down there, and that, that's murder. The Yankees get ahead from the sixth and seventh inning on. The statistics from that seventh inning on, Yankees 53-3 and three as far as games one going into the seventh inning with a lead. He's scored a wild pitch. It's two balls and two strikes now on Bobby Mercer, who replaced Reggie Jackson who was in the starting lineup. Jackson hurt his leg running out of ball in Yankee Stadium yesterday. Took himself out of the game. Pinella came in, had a big home run, and now it's Mercer. It's outside. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Milburn is on at second base. He singled and went to second on the wild pitch. Mercer, another one of the Yankee players. I'm sure a lot of people in New York and everywhere else wonder if he'll be with the club next year. A little Pinella, possibly a Nettles. Mumphrey, Jackson. Gidry. Foul ball. I tell you, he's wondering himself, Tony, after uh, George Steinbrenner had the big meeting in the clubhouse, the shouting match, it was Mercer who walked around and said, save the veterans, save the veterans, had buttons made, have save they, the veterans. Have they produced? How about a Pinella and a Nettles? Oh, Pinella has really been something, that Nettles has just been unbelievable. Outside, he walked in. So Mercer is on and brings up Oscar Gamble. Gamble is in right field tonight. Number 17, Oscar Gamble. Milburn at second base. Mercer is on at first. Two outs. Top half of the first inning. Gamble is one for five with one RBI. Two runs scored. That's a 200 average. Keel averages 3.9 strikeouts per nine innings. 2.9 walks per nine innings. So he looks like when he stands in the rubber, he's in a very awkward looking position. Watch when he takes his spot on the rubber with the left foot really closed and that left shoulder, he's almost looking back at second base. That last pitch he threw, he threw wild high outside. And as you pan up, you see that left shoulder, he's really facing towards second base or close to it. High. I'll bet you he, that's two pitches in a row. He's thrown wild high. It looks like he's not being able to open up enough. To get the ball down in the strike zone. He hides the ball well when he stands that way, but there it is right there. Watch where his ball's going to go. Here comes Art his Fowler's coming out right now, and let's see if he's going to make some kind of adjustment with it. He does not look comfortable, and the ball's riding out high outside the left-handed hitter. You don't think this is something new? I don't know what it is. You know, a pitcher can go out under pressure situations and get all out of whack. You're thinking about a lot of things, and you, your mechanics go haywire, and that's where an Art Fowler or a catcher like Newman pick it up. And Billy sends Fowler out and said, hey, listen, if this, in fact, is what they're talking about, this is just an assumption on our part. That's pretty drastic. I would think that uh, he's been doing it most of the year, but we'll wait and see because it is an unusual stance that he takes. It does give him a, a better system of hiding the ball. If we look at Bob Lemon, saw the Oakland bench first. Last uh, you tell me on that last pitch, was he facing second base with his shoulders as much as he was the ones prior to that? I couldn't was tell there a the distance, difference. A difference? I, I really couldn't, Tony. We'll look again. 
It's two balls and one strike with two outs. Oscar Gamble. Milburn is on at second. Mercer is on at first. It is low. Three and one. The Oakland bench. Matt Keogh got the first man, Mumphrey, on strikes. Knocked him down with the first pitch. Got him on a third strike curveball. And Milburn a hit. And here it comes. The bases are loaded. Another base on balls. And the hottest man in the Yankee lineup, Nettles, is the hitter. Nettles is hitting 7-14. Five for seven. One home run, six runs batted in, one double, two runs scored. He was four for four yesterday. We'll show Matt Keel from center field once again on the last pitch of the game. We'll watch him right outside once again. Three of the four pitches that he has thrown for balls to gamble were outside. The other one was low. You have to be careful here. He's been wild, and Nettles won't just jump on a cripple on the first pitch. It is low. Away again. Ball one. Billy, who knows he cannot go to his bullpen too often, has got it started again. There's some action in that Oakland bullpen. Nettles with the count of ball one. Bases loaded. Two outs. Outside. Two balls and no strikes. We're looking Jeff at Jones. Jeff Jones. Billy can't afford mistakes this early. He's down by two games. And that's young Michael Nettles watching Daddy in a batter's box with a count of two balls and no strikes. Down the right field line. It is going deep near the wall. And a nice grab by Armas. Might have been fouled at a Yankee Stadium where it's 3 10. That is around the flagpole for Grand Slam. That is what made the gate the Yankees left-handed power. A little bit of distance in right field. It was a fair ball if you're scoring. Fly ball to right fielder Armas. A good play. So an exciting inning. The Yankees do not score in the top half of the first. And here you take a look at it again. He's on the warning track and makes the grab right there in fair territory to end the inning. So we go into the bottom half of the first inning. It's the Yankees nothing, Oakland A's coming to bat. It'll be Henderson, Murphy, and Johnson. We'll show you the bases loaded catch off the bat of Greg Nettles by Tony Armas. We've seen good catches there, but here's Milburn coming in. <laughs> he thought it was going to be at least a double and a couple of runs. Dave Ricchetti. Young man, he's been some pitcher. I'll tell you, he throws hard. Here's the lineup for the A's. Henderson leads it off in left field. Murphy is in center field batting second. The D.H. Johnson. Armas is in right field. He's in the cleanup spot. Klutz at third base. Kelvin Moore is the first baseman. McKay at second base. The catcher is Newman. Rob Pichelo is the shortstop batting ninth. Catching number 10, Rick Jerome. Over the second half of the season, Rigetti might have been the best pitcher in that league. Very impressive stats. Eight wins, four losses. Her run average just over two, Joe. I think when you analyze pitcher stats, a lot of things come up. When you look at the number of hits the innings pitch he's given up, number of strikeouts the innings pitch, a few home runs. He's been something. Dave Rigetti, he'll be facing Ricky Henderson. Gave up only one home run, and that was to Gorman Thomas. He was 5 and 0 with one an earned run average of 1 in Columbus when he was called up by the Yankees on May. And there's a fastball a strike. The opposing hitters had only a combined batting average of 196 against Rigetti. 
Henderson has had a good series. 333 average, three for nine, two doubles and a triple. Lined out of play, and a strike two. Henderson really hasn't been in any situations where he could take off and steal. Third base in game one. They say he's the man that makes the club go. He's got to get base on balls. His base on balls total slacked off a little bit toward the end of the year. Some say that the umpires are not calling him when he's in, in his crouch and when he stands up. He's not getting as many high pitches this year. One ball and two strikes. Henderson is the only American League player to ever steal 100 bases in the season. In 1980, he stole an even 100. Lou Brock, of course, with 118, and Maury Wills, 104. One ball and two strikes. Base hit, center field. Brings up Dwayne Murphy, and we've got a young man on the mound, Dave Getty. He might give Henderson quite a battle. Henderson is going to do a little groundskeeping now around first base. He's marking his spot on the grass. It's a trick Joe Morgan used to mark a spot he wants to get so far that he knows he's got his proper lead. Rigetti has a good move. I don't. Good move. I wonder why a first base wouldn't go over there and just rub it out to agitate him. It's a lob throw. I recall a Saturday afternoon game against Kansas City. We saw Ken Kaiser call a ball on Rigetti. Poises that leg. Murphy hitting 286. Takes it high, and it's ball one. Two for seven, one RBI, one double. The Yankees acquired Rigetti from the Texas Rangers along with Juan Benitez, Paul Mirabel, and Mike Griffin. Big trade. Sparky Lyle, Mike Heath trade. He didn't get it, but what a cut he had. He wasn't fooled by that pitch one minute. You want to see the intensity of a base stealer as he's trying to pick up not only signs, but pick up a little move that Rigetti might be making. Scouting reports probably tell what Rigetti does with his feet or his shoulders, and look at Henderson trying to pick it up. He glances to his left with his eyes. There's the move! He's That's the one when he steps off that we saw him pick a guy off against Kansas City. Step back off the rubber, flip it. When he looks to his left, he's checking with his coach. He's just watching the pitcher now. Foul tip. That got to plate umpire Jerry Newdecker. Something, something happened to Murphy, too. Murphy's hurt something. Side. He had a good cut. Joe Rome was coming out for Dwayne Murphy, who on that swing... May have pulled something, Joe. We'll show it to you again. He now in his lower right side of his abdomen. See if you can pick it up. A hard swing, fouls it back. See if he winces in pain. He went down almost on all fours. Martin has come out. Now Joe Romer, the trainer, he may have pulled a muscle. Sometimes on a hard swing, you can pull that muscle and tear a rib cage. Says he's all right, Dwayne Murphy. He had a good cut. He was not fooled by that pitch at all. It's one ball and two strikes. Nobody out. The base runner first is Henderson. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. The Yankees won the first two games. We'll have to watch this swing now if he goes after a pitch. See how bad it really is. He hasn't tried to swing hard on the pitch yet. He lines it foul. He's kind of reached for it. Henderson at first base. 56 of 78 on the year. He led the American League in stolen bases. Rigetti's move, a fooler, as you can see. Henderson going back to first, thinking Rigetti was going to first base for a pickoff. Could be a decoy, too. Decoy him and take it off right now. It's that right leg that sends him back. High and tight. He's hurt. Oh. He's in he pain. Really They're hurt. coming out again. He's I gonna, don't think he's going to continue, Joe. He may have to leave this ball game. Dwayne Murphy. Here comes Joe Romo out there. Billy Martin coming out once again. And the youngster is in deep pain. Murphy, one of the best all-round players in the American League. He slumped with his average near the end of the season, but he hit some home runs. We, we've seen him play brilliant in the outfield in games one and two. 
Cliff Johnson is playing hurt today, Joe, and they don't have a whole lot of firepower. He can't straighten out. Uh, They're going to make a change, it looks like. It is a shame. They'll afford to lose him. He took a hard cut on that fastball, and he's just having trouble breathing. Rigetti, in the meantime, loosening up. Murphy, for the Oakland A's during the regular season, had 15 game-winning RBIs. That'll tell you how valuable he is. We'll show you the swing again. That's a check swing. A check swing, and it's just the shooting pain. It's either a pull or a tear. They're now working on him. He wants to stay in the game. That's pretty obvious. Murphy had 15 home runs, second to Johnson on the team. 60 RBIs, second to Armas with 76. Excuse me, Armas uh, had 22 home runs. Murphy was third on the team. He can't even catch his breath, Joe. He wants to go on and play, and he's not going to make it. You wonder if that area, if it's a pull or a tear, you can even... Uh, separate the rib cage. We don't know for sure. We're just speculating. But it's, it's a tremendous loss. It's like Rick Bassetti has come into the on deck circle. Murphy hitting 286 in the series, two for seven with Norby and a double. But defensively, he's been a tremendous player and he's going to have to leave the game. And that's too bad. Figure Johnson as Murphy leaves was hurt in this game number two with a bruised hip and thigh. He's going right to the clubhouse. He's not even stopping. Joe Romo, the trainer, and the coach Lee Walls taking him right to the clubhouse. And Rick Bassetti will be the hitter for him. Bassetti had a double one for one in the series. That was yesterday. While he's loosening up, this telecast is presented by Authority of Major League Baseball is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Bassetti, a former Toronto Blue Jay. He's a good outfielder. Plays shallow, can go get him, has a good throwing arm. It's the ball right center, left center field. So, Henderson is at first base. The count is two balls and two strikes. Bassetti has come in to replace Dwayne Murphy, who after a hard swing against Rigetti had to leave the game. There oh. goes Henderson. Struck him out the throw. They'll not get him. Nice play by the second baseman, Randolph. Stolen base of the series for the A's. He really set Rigetti up because he took a shorter lead that time. And when the youngster Rigetti looked at him, it was what Maury Wills called a, a one-way lead, kind of leaning toward the bag with a shorter lead. But the momentum was going to second. Here comes the throw from Rick Cerrone. Lucky that ball didn't go into center field. It was a nice play by Randolph. The batter is Johnson. The only two stolen bases prior to this came from Dave Winfield and Reggie Jackson. Johnson. Watch him at second. High ball one. Johnson is 0 for 3. In the first game, he didn't play yesterday due to an injury. Sliding in the second base, he said he just, his hip, buttock, so sore, took whirlpool treatment and everything, just couldn't drive the ball, couldn't hardly move. But he's in it tonight. It is high. Two balls, no strikes. Billy Martin and the A's trying to make something happen here. They're trailing two games to none. This is their whole season right here tonight. Ah, Reno. How'd you like to sit in front of that guy all night blowing that horn on you? <laughs> They're having fun at the old ballpark. Henderson is on at second. 
One out. It's a strike. Johnson doesn't believe it. Umpires have a stock answer for that. If you don't believe it, read it about it in the paper tomorrow and see what it is. Jerry Newdecker is the plate umpire. No score. Anderson a good lead at second base. Three balls and two strikes on Cliff Johnson, the designated hitter. Johnson, another former Yankee, was there in 1977-78-79. Foul ball out of play. Rigetti won his first major league game with an impressive game against Cleveland on May 23rd. He also won at Cleveland, Kansas City for a 3-0 first half record. Earned run average of 1.50. Billy Martin looking for a run. He's got a good base runner, a fast one on at second base. Bob Lemon looking at his young left-hander, Rigetti. Foul ball out of play. Rigetti throws so hard and his ball moves so well upstairs. Cliff Johnson went after a bad pitch, but it's so hard to lay off, especially with the background a little bit bad at this time. Nothing, nothing. Anderson, the bottom of the first, a single, stole second. Murphy was the batter, had to leave the game. Bassetti came in. If you're scoring, a strikeout is charged to Murphy. And now Cliff Johnson with a count of three balls and two strikes. Walking. Cerrone has a word with Brighetti, who averages 3.3 walks per nine innings pitched. Tony Armas. This is the man that the Yankees believe they've got to pitch around. They had a pitch to him in game one with the bases loaded. He grounded out. They've done a good job of stopping him so far. One for eight. A 125 average, although he was robbed of a home run on that tremendous catch by Winfield. Ball on. Both pitchers, as we look at Henderson at second and Johnson at first, both pitchers shaky first innings. Yankees had the bases loaded, and Nettles drove one down the line. Armas made the play to end it. There were two base on balls by Keel. off he had a good cut Armas when he gets the bat in his hand as we look at Billy Martin saying take a good look at where the outfielders are Armas goes up there swinging he struck out 115 times only walked 19 times he goes to whacking the throwing arm of the Yankee outfield is in left field and Dave Winfield it's a strike one ball and two strikes. To this point, Rigetti has thrown the stall fastball. Tony Armas. It's the man you count on, especially now. More pressure on his shoulders. Armas, as we look at the base runners, especially with Murphy out and Johnson hurt. Bouncing ball. Milburn to Randolph. One. Double play. 6-4-3. Armas hits into a double play. That ends the inning. So at the end of one complete inning, the score here. Yankees nothing. Oakland A's nothing. A beautiful shot of a beautiful area. We are in Oakland. Oakland Alameda Coliseum. And the new center fielder replacing Dwayne Murphy as Bassetti. And Tony, they don't give up. 
hardly any defense, but they will miss that bat. Yeah, he's quite an outfielder. He's got a good throwing arm, charging the ball. He plays shallow, can go get him. In fact, we might see the basket catch. He's a pretty good showman, Pacetti. Bob Watson takes the first pitch, low and inside, Ooh. ball one. <laughs> All right, pal. Well hit, but right at the third baseman, Klutz. One out. Bob Watson gets a hanging breaking ball from Keel. He's had control problems. Klutz with a nice play. Billy Martin, Wayne, Wayne Gross, and Klutz, they alternate, as do Piccolo, or they platoon as do Piccolo and Stanley. Here it is from left center field. He's been a good player for them since he stayed off the disabled list, former Yankee. It's a strike. Throw and arguing with the home plate umpire, Jerry Newdecker. What a contrast. We saw umpires get blasted after game one. <laughs> and congratulatory phone calls right after game number two. Curveball is low. One ball and one strike. We just show you that first pitch, the breaking ball that Cerrone thought differently about. Well, it's belt high, a curveball. That didn't look too bad to me. In fact, it's the kind of pitch that if you're a hitter, you might want to jump on. Just hangs up there about shoulder high. Foul ball pass, third base coach Joel Tabelli. One ball and two strikes. No score. We're in the second inning. A lot of changes in baseball, managers and coaches being let out. One two pitch. Go around. Peel. No. Here goes the first base umpire that time. Marty Springstead says, uh uh. Well, yeah, with uh, the Frank Howard gone. We'll see that again. On the check swing by Cerrone. He's got a pretty good curveball today. Except. Uh, it's breaking a lot, Joe. He's having trouble controlling. It's either high or he's overthrowing it and he's uh, throwing it in the dirt. Foul tip didn't mean the swing. Count remains at two and two. Was that a confirmed report as far as you heard that Bobby Cox got the Toronto Blue Jays managerial job? I heard it, but I can't really say it was confirmed. Some coaches are all looking for jobs. Like Joey Malfitano may be leaving the Cubs with his coaching staff. And Lee Elio will be their manager for Dallas Green. 2-2 two -two pitch. It's outside. 3-2. and two. Dave Garcia, the manager of the Cleveland Indians, was in the ballpark, seated on the bench. We were talking about pitching, and Art Fowler was saying, oh, Keogh's got a good slider, good curveball. Garcia says, he's also got a good sinker and laughed. Straight away center field, so Bassetti will have a chance to make the first play. Let's see if he... Nope, no pass. Oh. He, he wants to make his first out in postseason play. The sure way. Let's pause briefly for our station identifications. This is the NBC Television Network. This is WNBC-TV, New York. Two outs, nobody on. Randolph to batter. We're in the second inning, no score. Yankees loaded the bases in the first inning, couldn't score, left three on. Oakland left two on in their bottom half. Randolph bunts it fouled on the third baseline. Two strikes to count. Randolph two for eight, one RBI, one run scored, 250. I think this is a pretty fair ballpark, Joe. A lot of people, the hitters will come in here and say it's a pitcher's ballpark. You've got to hit the ball pretty well. You don't get a whole lot of cheap home runs here. High and tight. One ball and two strikes. High overhead. It's a good shot right there to show all the foul territory behind home plate, which makes it even a better pitcher's park because a lot of fouls that would have gone into the stands are caught by infielders and the catcher. 
Two balls and two strikes. And the other thing to think about is you look at that shot, the pass ball. You can take two bases. You can go from first to third if that ball goes all the way back to the screen. Reminds me of old Forbes Field. Man on second base, you had a pass ball. It was a run scored. Really had to block the ball. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Hot shot, base hit, left field. Randolph is on. So with two outs, Randolph is on at first, and it brings up Mumphrey. Pichelo playing Randolph up the middle. Keel got a ball down and in. Show again. Neither Pichelo nor Stanley have what you would call exceptional range, but they are smart because Billy tells them where to play, and they've made just eight errors. Two men out. Randolph may try and get in scoring position. During the regular season, he stole 14 times, was caught five times. This is a situation where, with a left-hander up, Lemon may put him on his own. The two outs. He's drawn the throw. He's got some ideas. He's getting a bigger lead than Ricky Henderson was by a few feet. And now he's lessened it a little bit or shortened it. It's a strike on the outside corner. Two outs. Mumphrey was out on strikes his first time up. Base hit, center field, Randolph, round second. He's digging for third. Bassetti's throw is cut off by Pichelo. First and third for the Yankees, Milburn the batter. But watch Willie Randolph from our left center field camera. Does not use a coach. He sees Bassetti. He knew where he was playing. He touches the bag with his left foot, where you can cut the bag much more sharply. So, Milburn is the batter. He's been a hot hitter. Nine hits in his last 13 times at bat. Two outs, nothing, nothing to score. Hot smash, nice play by Moore at first base. That ends the inning. A one hop, a right at him. Calvin Moore, a good play. He almost comes up a little bit quickly as it hits that grass and slow down on him. He's shown a pretty good glove down there in this three-game series. So that ends the top half of the second inning. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. It's the Yankees nothing and Oakland nothing. And there she is. The Goodyear Blimp Columbia from Los Angeles, California. And the pilot is Captain Joel Chamberlain from Norwood, Massachusetts. Our cameraman is George Simpson. Columbia's Goodyear's newest blimp and has been in operation for less than three months, giving us those beauty shots and a strike one on Klutz. That's a beauty shot. One ball and one strike. Bouncing ball. Nice play by Milburn. Well, there were a lot of people that said when Bucky Dent got hurt that Milburn might be able to fill in for a week but not do the job. He's been outstanding, not just with the bat. He's made the plays. Oh, four Nettles you tell him, He almost steps on the hand or the head of Nettles. Watch this. Just misses. He's done a job. You expected the defense from him, but he's hitting aside from that. Kelvin Moore, the batter. Ball one to count. He's 0 for 6 so far. He's made some good plays in the field. Let's watch Nettles in the range. Nettles gives a shortstop a break. Because he can go so well to his left. That may be as tough a play as there is for a shortstop. I think the one in the hole where you can plant your foot is easier than coming in and having to throw across your body. That's the hardest pitch for Getty's thrown. 
We're getting through one curveball in this ballgame thus far to Klutz leading off the first pitch to him. Two balls and a strike to count. Three balls and a strike. Fastball, you could hear it land in the mid of Cerrone. Rigetti just rears back and pumps. There's a base hit to right field. Moore is on, so he gets his first base hit of the series. Singles are right. There you see him. Here's Dave McKay. You cannot take Calvin Moore too lightly at first base as far as stealing. He had some pretty good minor league stats. 76 stolen bases. 58. 58. McKay is two for eight. One RBI, a 250 average. One out. It's a strike. That looked like a breaking ball. He's throwing very few. I haven't seen a straight change yet either, which is exceptional. Moore leading off first. One out. He went around, says New Decker, and it's strike two. I don't think there's any question that the home plate umpire Jerry Newdecker is a pitcher's umpire. I remind you of an Ed Rungi. Ted, that could have just as easily been called a call strike, it yeah. seems, from here. Two strikes to count. It's outside. With a guy like Newdecker, you will see hitters turn on him, but I haven't seen a catcher or a pitcher turn yet, so that's an indication to me if he's going one way or the other. He's going more in the favor of the pitcher. But if you're consistent and you know it, you can accept it. There's a base hit right field. Gamble charging hard. Moore will stop at second. So the Oakland A's have something going. Base runners at first and second. One man out. And the batter is Newman, the catcher, Jeff Newman. Newman has only been to bat twice. He's 0 for 2. In two innings, the Yankees have left five on. The Oakland A's have left two on. They have base runners on right now as we look at manager Billy Martin. He'd like to jump out on top. Joe Newman against the Yankees at 81 was a pretty good hitter. He had 350. Just 16 ball games. Drove him just one run. I don't know if it's just me, but his facial features remind me so much of Merlin Olson. One out. High. All one. Every time I see him, look at that. Reminds me of Merlin. 1-0 pitch. He didn't get it. One ball and one strike. Had a good cut at it. Rigetti is allowed three hits now. Keel is allowed three hits. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Rigetti, as we look at Billy, Rigetti in 1981, average, giving up only six hits per nine innings. These A's making noise right here in the bottom of the second. Rigetti's big thing is he's lowered that base on balls rate. Last year at Columbus, he walked 101 in 142 innings. Fouled out of play. He credits Joe as Sammy Ellis, doesn't he? He uh, sure does. Roaming pitching coach for straightening him out. And not so much the uh, mechanics of his pitching, it's just the philosophy of pitching that when something goes wrong, you just don't blow your cool and, and just blow yourself out of the tub. Just hang in there. And he gives Sammy Ellis a tremendous amount of credit. One ball, 
ball, two strikes, one out. Base runners at first and second. Inside, two balls and two strikes. I think Stan Williams, who started the season here, helped him a little bit also. Mike King, now the pitching coach. Clyde, a great student of films, watching the films of pitchers, picking up little flaws in their mechanics. Curveball hangs high, and it's a full count. He took something off the pitch. That was the one he was going to use to get Newman on strikes, but it was out of the strike zone. Newman laid off, and now it's three balls, two strikes. The base runner at second, Moore, checking with his third base coach, Boyer, Jackie Moore, telling McKay what's going on. Here's a big pitch. They're holding. He struck him out. It's one of those decisions right there that the manager makes that can turn a ball game. Billy Martin said, nope, he strikes out too much against a strikeout pitcher. I'm going to hold my runners, and this time it paid off. Rob Pichelo is the batter. Pichelo is one for three, one run scored. Another slow-paced game. We've told you that the Oakland A's ball games average just under three hours, the longest in the major leagues. This is starting out that way. A lot of base runners. Strike one as we look at Kelvin Moore. McKay is on it first. The Yankees have stranded five runners through two innings. Just one for Oakland the first, but they're... There's a the strike. strike two strikes the Ricketti you cannot look for a pitch some you can sit on a certain pitch a breaking ball like Pinella sent on a breaking ball for the home run outside Pichelo against left handers has been fairly effective 366 Bob Lemon One ball, two strikes, two outs. Outside. Two and two the count. having a little difficulty getting around on the fastball this inning. In the first inning, Forgetti's control was not that sharp. He's in the strike zone now. The fastball of his Joe appears to move more upstairs than when it's down. It really takes off with his belt higher above that. They've been, they've been swinging at some bad pitches up high because the ball is taking off. It's hopping, if you will. Foul tip. The lights are on here, but you just wonder. It's at time where we're in between tough it is to pick him up. He is tough to pick up with good lights and dark with a bright sun. And he's got that fastball moving at up around 95. You're going to pull the trigger in a hurry, don't you? Two balls and two strikes with two outs. Bouncing ball foul. Nettles comes up with it. Rob Pichelo. Moore is a base runner at second. Dave McKay, base runner at first. Nothing, nothing in the second inning. Joe, in game one, the Oakland A's left seven runners on through nine. In game two, they left, well, I've got eight. So they've had some opportunities with a couple of key base sets. Bouncing ball, Nettles has it. Horses on. Nettles to Randolph. Guess McKay coming down from first. We complete two innings of baseball here and the scores. We look at the play once again. It's the Yankees nothing, the Oakland A's nothing, and we'll be right back after these messages from your local station.
from Oakland, California. What a beautiful sight that is. It's the Yankees and the Oakland A's, and we're in the third inning, no score, and Dave Winfield is going to lead it off here. Winfield lined hard his first time up. Right to Henderson in left field, who hardly had to move. Both clubs with three base hits. Inside, it's ball one. 1981 record of Dave Winfield. That's with the New York Yankees, not in the American League, those statistics. Those are just offensive stats. It does not tell what this man has done defensively in going from first and third. Off the end of the bat, Bichelo, long throw, low throw. He can't get him, and Winfield is digging for second. He'll make it easily. And with those giant strides, he had ideas of maybe even going to third. So that right there showed the tremendous instinct of Winfield. He stepped on the bag, the ball bounced, never needed a coach. A lot of guys would have run right straight out to the right field foul line. Watch when he hits. He sees the ball and he makes a left turn. Nobody had to tell him what to do. He's, his sight never left the ball. Just marvelous. Watch his stride as he gets near the bag to make it close. So you kids, when they tell you, when they tell you don't watch the ball, watch the ball. Because you can run as fast and just swivel your head and Winfield just taught you a lesson. It's an error on the shortstop. Here's Bobby Mercer. Takes it low, ball one. He takes normally a pretty good-sized stride, but when he got near first base, he really opened it up. It was almost like a broad jump. Bobby wanting to pull the ball. And Winfield a third. Outside. Two know, balls, no strikes. Joe, that's another plus the Yankee have against right-handed pitching. They Not only do they have the power from the left side, which has been indicated in this series so far, but when they get a guy like this, they've got guys who can pull the ball because they're experienced. Nettles, Gamble, Jackson, he's playing. Mercer. If you're slapping, you got to work hard to get the ball to the right side. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. The official report on Dwayne Murphy, who had to leave the game, is that he had back spasms on the left side. He took a hard swing, and with two strikes, Bassetti came in, struck out as we look at Winfield, and Murphy left the game. Fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes. Oscar Gamble, the on-deck batter. No score in this game. We're in the third inning. An air by Pichelo has put Winfield on at second base. Nobody out. Game three. Yankees lead two games to none. Curveball is fouled off. Keon knows that Mercer is going to try to be pulling that ball. He's keeping that ball away from him. Little battle going on here. Mercer in spring training was on the verge of being released from this Yankee ball club or traded. He got a big home run in that first ball game, Grand Slam, wasn't it? He had won himself a job for the season. Pinch hit. High hopper, Winfield's going to head for third. He'll make it as Pichelo goes to first to get Mercer. The Yankees have Winfield at third with one out and Oscar Gamble the batter. Pretty good judgment on the part of Winfield once again. As soon as that ball got over the head of the pitcher, he took off. He was leaning toward third. He's now can score on the sacrifice fly. Look, he doesn't need a coach. Look at this. He's looking over his shoulder right there. If that doesn't remind you of Willie Mays, you can picture that, can't you? Willie coming around second, the hat off, looking back, not worrying about a coach. Tell you the thing about Winfield, two of those strides, he just eats up the ground. Infield is moving in now as Oscar Gamble steps in the batter's box with Winfield at third. There you see him. One 
ball, no strikes. Line drive right at the second baseman. So they were positioned perfectly, and McKay hauls into line drive. Dave McKay. Dave McKay has been very upset mm -hmm. by the criticism on the part of mm -hmm. some people in the media mm -hmm. that the Oakland A's is not a good infield. It's a shot hit right at him. So the infield moved in. Both managers just trying to jump out in front here. Put a number on the scoreboard. Winfield is at third. Two outs, and here's Nettles as we look at the Oakland bench. It's fouled out of play, strike one. Nettles has already tied a record of six RBIs in the three-game series. Tied Paul Blair and Boog Powell. Blair in 69, Powell in 70. National League record of seven and Henry Aaron in 1969. So he's got a man in scoring position, Dave Winfield. Keogh is not throwing it as hard as Rigetti, but he's had a pretty good fastball. There's Winfield. One strike pitch to Nettles. Strike two. This is the situation where the Oakland pitching staff has gotten hurt twice in this series thus far. No balls, two strikes, and the base hit has kept the rally going for the Yankees. Hart Fowler and Billy have both been upset about it, so Newman went halfway out to remind him. Ball one. In fact, Fowler, who is a very understanding coach, was talking about it, and he said, pitchers say, well, I tried. He said, you don't try, you do it. No balls and two strikes. Trying to end, end up in the second division. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Nettles. Winfield is, is a third. Reggie Jackson, the report is, and he aggravated the left calf, and that kept him out of the game tonight. One two pitch. Slow hopper. McKay coming over. He's there. So the Yankees leave another runner. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. Yankees nothing. Oakland nothing. Plenty of signs, plenty of enthusiasm here at the ballpark. These Oakland A's, even with the strike, drew over a million. They were looking to draw some two million people here next year. Wait and see, but it should be a big banner year in this area. These fans are really enthusiastic, and I'll tell you the way it's been going, it's like it's been boiling and bubbling, a, a Mount St. Helen feeling here where something's going to erupt. And we certainly thank the Oakland A's for that nice welcome that we just received, Tony. Henderson takes it high, ball one. Henderson singled and stole second his first time up. Cerrone checking his glove. Both teams have had runners in scoring position in each one of their at-bats. The Yankees have stranded six. Oakland, three. Hi. There's two balls and no strikes. Mickey Henderson fan club. Henderson against Rigetti. Two of the bright youngsters in baseball. Ball three. Keep in mind, and when Henderson singled, first time up, he stole second. He's on. Listen to the crowd. Billy, Billy Martin talking to Cliff Johnson. He's giving him instructions. Johnson is the on-deck batter. Well, and 
Yankee standing. We weren't sure he told him to stall, but Johnson did a good job, and I doubt if that's what he's thinking about now. It's nothing, nothing in the third. Now, Bassetti taking a good look at his third base coach. He got a good combination in there now. Yeah, he can hit and run. He did for uh, Roy Hartsfield up in Toronto. There's that snap throw stepping off of the left foot. Billy Martin is always thinking a couple of hitters ahead, and he may have given some instructions to Johnson that even if Bassetti makes out, you may want to take a pitch or two and let Henderson get in scoring position. But that remains to be seen. He jumps on the first pitch and pops it up, and Willie let Randolph it fall. says, Let him fall. Get him off the base. That's one of those where you might think, trap the ball in the infield, smother it, get the force out at second base, get Henderson off the base pass and put Facetti there. But it's something you've got to work on. It's an old Frank Facetti trick that he had his infielders do. Obviously didn't dawn on Willie Randolph, but it could have been a good play. Well, we saw it in that uh, play McGraw pulled off and ended up with a double play. So Cliff Johnson is the batter now. Henderson, still a speedy base runner, is on. Even with a normal time at bat, Johnson takes a weekend to hit. Johnson has done a good job for these Oakland A's. There he oh. goes. Here's a throw. Safe. So I'm not certain that Henderson had that good a jump. But with Ligetti, with that high kick. Watch how many steps Henderson gets. A high knee kick as soon as that right foot passes the rubber. And Henderson just accelerates. Show you how he did. He broke stride and still made it relatively easy. He had four steps before Rigetti got rid of the ball. And look at him look back, wondering what happened. And it wasn't even close. Broke stride, took a look. He could have stopped for directions. And no strikes. It's a strike on the inside corner. That was amazing, Tony, that he stopped and looked back. It was obviously a straight steal. I don't know what happened. He looked back over his shoulder, and didn't pick up the ball, and uh, it'll give you the idea of the kid's speed. He's 22 years old. And Cleet Barr said he has tremendous instincts base running. You better watch him steal in third right now, too. He's getting, getting a lot of room down there. Foul out of play. Willie Randolph at second base has shortened up a little bit. For Johnson, Milburn has to play a very deep short. Randolph is kind of jockeying back and forth. There you'll see the defensive lineman for the blip. Nettles at third, giving Johnson the line. Milburn not playing him that much to pull the hole. Watch Randolph jockeying back and forth. Keeping Henderson close. It's two balls and two strikes. One out. We're in the bottom of the third. No score. Henderson, a good lead off second. He's single and stolen the first. He has just walked and stolen second here in the third. There he goes. Fouled off. I'll tell you something, boy. He starts a fire, that guy. And when he takes off, you can almost see the sparks oh. come off his shoes. All that first slide. They were not going to get him there. He was going to make that easily. He can accelerate so quickly. That's a tough play for a third baseman because Nettles has to come to get the throw in case Johnson swings through it. And that means if Johnson hits it, he can get a ball through the left side. That's Billy Ball right there. Henderson getting all his equipment together. He is an exciting player. And Johnson, the batter, two balls and two strikes. lead fouls it off Johnson just fought off the pitch his bat ended up in front of the mound he's going out to get it Cleet Boyer will help him get it Johnson kind of limping going out there remember here he fights it off he loses the bat in the process 
Johnson hurt his left side. You can see him kind of favoring him, even with that swing sliding in the game in Yankee Stadium. So you don't see him cut down his swing like he did on that last pitch very often. He's just trying to get the barrel on the ball. No, he takes his cuts. This guy could get out of a hospital bed on Christmas Eve and show you a pretty good swing. He likes the whack, and he's done a good job. Henderson, a good lead. Crowd getting worked up. It's popped up in the infield. Watson and Randolph, and Watson says, I'll take it, and he does. Henderson, along with Milburn at second base. Record for most stolen bases in the game in the National League is three. Joe Morgan and Ken Griffey have it. In the American League, it's two, held by many players. So Henderson will be one of those many players, but you get the feeling before this night's over, he'll have that record to himself. Two outs. And here's Armas, who into a double play his first time up. Well, here's the guy, even though he has not had a hot series with two outs at first base open. They may pitch to him, but I've got to believe they're not going to throw many strikes. Going right after him. They're going right to him. It's Lemon's confidence in Rigetti. Dave Rigetti. Armas can look so bad just for just so long. He swings through a lot of pitches, and then he can crush you. play and it's strike two. Armas with men in scoring position during the 1981 season hit a 370. <laughs> two strikes to count. Henderson is on at second base. Dave Ricchetti whose father plays shortstop in the Yankee organization. Outside. Would you pitch? Would you have pitched him? Now he's one ball and two strikes. With him. two outs, first base over. Cuts up next. I don't care if he is having a bad sir. He is a very dangerous man. This man was second in the league in RBIs. I was like expecting his eyes. I would not let him beat me, and I would not oh. let him drive in the run. Butts would have to do it for me. I two balls and two strikes. If this one's a ball, you can bet the next one will be for sure. The on-deck batter is Mickey Klutz. Billy Martin. He wants to get a run. Jump out in front. Henderson on his second base. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Curveball. He went after him. What a spot he placed that curveball. Young Rigetti gets his third strikeout. That ends the third inning. So at the end of three complete innings, game three, Yankees nothing, Oakland nothing. Well, when you talk about pitching, Tony Kubek is sitting next to a guy who knows what it's all about. The man right here who's got a shot at the... Well, you just got an award from Joe Cohen, but I'm sure, Raleigh, that you're going to get a lot of votes for signing. I personally think you ought to be the most valuable player in the league, but congratulations on the Joe Cohen Award. Thank you very much. It's a, it was a, certainly a great honor, something I'll be proud of for a long time. See, while the game goes along and Joe does the play-by-play, -play, can you sit in with us for a while? Sure. You play in this ballpark sure. and with this World Championship Oakland A's <laughs> team when they were World Champions. Keo delivers the first pitch, and it's ball one to Bob Watson. Is this a pitcher's park or a hitter's park, Raleigh? Oh, this is certainly a pitcher's park, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, the ball doesn't really carry that far here. Line drive down the left field line. Extra bases for Bob Watson. Played well by Henderson. They're going to haul him to a single. What a play. Oh, that had double written all over it. Well, he's a good young player. You played against the kid, Ricky Henderson, and he has tremendous speed, and he's really improved his throwing arm. Yes, he certainly has. He's uh, got a great arm from the outfield. You can see, you tell on this play here, he, he got it right up, uh, got it into second base in a hurry, and uh, it's probably a big play for Oakland right there, holding him to a single. The Yankees have a trouble as we look at this, driving home runs. Watson gets a low pitch from Keogh. What a play he made. 
Roan takes a strike on the outside corner. You stop to think about it. That's about a 330 foot single. Nettles yesterday hit a 395 foot single. Klutz now at third base is Valley starting to move back, but he is still well in front of the third base bag. Apparently thinking that Sharon might be budding. Sharon can pull the ball, Riley, and he's hit some shots down that side, so that's dangerous to play that shallow. Yeah, well, they've got a good... There's a force at second. Ooh. Did Watson ever dump him? <laughs> playing that shallow might have worked. Had he been playing back for Sharon, he may not have been able to come in and get the force out at second base, so Cleet Meyer moved him in and it worked. Watch Bobby Watson. Really do a job on Dave McKay. McKay is a rock. He, uh, he ordinarily he's... gets the throw off. He got him good there. Why would he catch it one-handed, Tony, if he's going to go for two? I don't think he's going for two. I think he realized he wasn't going to get a throw off the side and not to throw it wildly. Randolph is the batter. One man out. No score. We're in the fourth inning. Low ball one. Raleigh, in addition to the ball not carrying, is there anything else that makes it a pitcher's ballpark? Obviously, defenses. Uh, defenses are probably it. Uh, you can pitch the Yankees a little bit different here in, in Oakland. Uh, in, in New York, you can probably uh, stay uh, away from the hitters a lot better. Here, uh, you, can, you can pitch them both in and away. Uh, and in New York, you can't do that. You try and stay away from the left-handers there. It's going. Runner goes on a hit and run, fouled off. Raleigh, we saw it in the first inning with the bases loaded when Nettles lined the ball in the right field corner. At the 310 mark, that might have wrapped around the pole. That, might have been a grand slam. That would have been a home run in New York. That's uh, one reason why you can pitch in in this ballpark. You can make a, you might be able to make a mistake in and still get away with it. In New York, that would have been a grand slam, and the Yankees would have been up four runs. On the Yankees and on the Oakland A's, who's the one man you don't want to beat you? Who do you pitch around? Uh, I would have to say Winfield on the Yankees and uh, probably Armas here on Oakland A's. Randolph up the middle, high hopper. Picciolo has it to flip in time. Beautiful play, and they're flashing some leather. are positioning your defense counts. Remember the second inning, Randolph hit a ball in the hole between third and short, but they still played him up the middle of the diamond. I don't know if that was a screwball rally or if it was a breaking ball, but Pichelow played it well and made a nice play to get a force out. I couldn't really tell. It was a super play by Pichelow going that deep and still getting to be able to flip the ball back to the second baseman. I'm going to go back to something that Joe asked you a while ago. You said Winfield for the Yankees. If Reggie Jackson's the lineup, would you still say pitching around Winfield or Reggie? Well, then you'd have to pitch around both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> diplomatic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Quick throw to first base. It's like the old Dodger lineup. You had to walk eight guys to get to the guy you wanted to pitch to. <laughs> Mumphrey. Outside. One ball, no strikes. Obvious advantage of the pitching staff, your specialty, a great Yankee bullpen. Oh, without a doubt, they've uh, they've got a super bullpen, and uh, it seemed like it was all season long. They get into the sixth or seventh inning with the lead. You're going to see uh, Davis, and you're going to see Gossage. So they probably got a uh, well, probably one of the best ones in the, in both leagues. He doesn't get it. And then who comes out of the blue yesterday but a man named George Frazier who very few people had heard about. Uh, we had seen him one time in New York and he threw real well against us. Uh, he does throw the ball hard. He's got a good sinker and uh, he's got a pretty good a pretty good idea on the mound. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside. Two balls and a strike. Well, you hear so much about getting ready in the bullpen. How many pitches does it take you to get ready? Uh, on certain days, if it's real cold, you might take uh, anywhere to from 18 to 20, 22 pitches, something like that. On a warm day, you can get ready in about 15. Outside. Three and one. I'm interested in this Winfield Jackson. Who do you find the tougher between the two? Uh, well, Jackson can beat you, uh, you know, from the left side, and Winfield can beat you from the right side. I think Winfield's probably more of a line drive hitter than uh, Reggie. Reggie can hit the high, long home runs, but the Winfield's more of a line drive hitter, so I would say Jackson will hurt you more. There goes the runner. Ball four. A 
It's like asking the guy in the electric chair, how do you want AC or DC? <laughs> I'll tell you, 2000 Matt Keel, 1500. <laughs> yeah, Matt Keel is really pitching himself into trouble. He somehow seems to stick out of it. And you can't keep doing it against the Yankee ball club with hitters throughout their lineup, nine hitters in that lineup. The Yankees have left six on base through three. They've got a couple more. They've had man scoring position every inning thus far. And that is putting an awful lot of pressure, I would think, on a pitcher to have to keep coming up with that big pitch or getting a play behind you. Well, my, Matt's done the job twice. He had Greg Nettles at the plate twice with runners in scoring position and got him both times. So he's done a good job on Greg. runners at first and second one strike to count Raleigh while we have a chance we want to thank you for stopping by and and congratulations to Bud Selig and the rest of the Brewers and yourself okay thank you very much Tony Go. okay Raleigh lined out of play what a year he had what a couple of years he's been having Raleigh fingers Milburn is the batter he has six hits he had a base hit here in the first inning the record for the most hits in the three game series is seven Brooks Robinson, the American League. National League all also has a seven. Art Shamsky and Jay Johnstone. So Milburn. Bidding for the record book as we look at the base runners. Randolph and Mumphrey. High outside. One ball, two strikes, two outs. There's a look at the runners from our overhead shot defense you get an idea how they're playing Milburn bouncing ball more at first base he'll take it himself and once again the Oakland A's get out of it Yankees nothing as we go to the bottom of the fourth Oakland A's nothing they'll be setting up Klutz Moore and McKay A good crowd on hand and baseball fans and Yankee fans will have no problem identifying that man right there. Jolton Joe DiMaggio, center of your screen. Charlie Finley brought the A's here from Kansas City. He hired Joe D as a coach who gave quite a few pointers to the Sal Bandos, Joe Rudy's, and Reggie Jackson. Joe D. Left of your screen, the owner of the Yankees, George Steinbrenner. One ball and one strike. One and one, Mickey Klutz. It's going to be a tough play, but it's going foul. This franchise, these fans really enjoying themselves and franchise has really turned around for the new ownership Billy Martin who is now the general manager and the manager now it's Mr. Walter Haas the son-in-law runs the ball club Mr. Roy Eisenhart they went out and hired the man not that guy the guy who's in the picture before that Billy Martin made him general manager well, he was put on the paper the other day. He would like to manage maybe two, three more years and go to the front office. And he talked about Cleet Boyer as being the possible manager. But that's a long ways in the distance. Count remains at one ball, two strikes. He said, I'm grooming that man right there. Cleet's name was rumored as a possible candidate for the Atlanta job. Hit the back. Sharon on top of the head, it looked like, and then got New Decker. See, one year the Oakland A's before the new regime of owners, they draw two, three hundred thousand people for the entire season one year, lowest in the major leagues. They've been playing in front of full houses the last couple of years. Well, they were looking two balls, two strikes. They were looking this year to go over two million, and they certainly will do that next year. They drew over a million this year with the strike. 2-2 pitch. Foul out of play. Oakland fans, they love their Oakland A's, and why not? Earrings, cap, jacket. She was ready. Hopped up. Jammed him. Randolph will take it. Tell you, it's last well he ended up the third and he's striking out Armas but Johnson 
little pop fly. Watson, steady, a little pop fly. Here's Kelvin Moore. He singled his first time up. No runs, four hits, no errors for the Yankees. No runs, three hits, and one error for the Oakland A's. Fastball is inside, ball one. Yankees have left with eight men on so far. A's have left four. One ball, one strike. Inside. Two balls and a strike with one out. Left field, base hit. Curveball and hung, and Moore is on with his second base hit of the night. He's shifting around to play him hit the right field, which is where most of his power is, right center to the right line. But a breaking ball he got in front, and we told you earlier, he can run also, can steal a base. McKay, one out of double play possibility from the right side. So maybe we'll see a little bit of starting a runner and trying to hit behind him. McKay single to right field his first time up. One man out. A lot of base runners in this ball game. 13. 12 men left down thus far. One section will stand up, and as soon as they sit down, the section next to it will get up and holler, go, and then it just goes right around the ballpark. Look like the June Taylor dancers. Nettles at third to second. One out. Over to first. It is a double play. So, Rigetti gets the ground ball. Nettles starts it. Five, four, three. Ends the inning at the end of four complete innings. The score here in a festive ballpark. It's the Yankees nothing, the A's nothing. And we'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Well, the sun is about seeing the last of this day. Beautiful Oakland Alameda Coliseum. Game number three for the American League pennant. The Yankees won game one and game two. First one, three to one. Game two in Yankee Stadium, 13 to three. We have no score in the ball game. Each team has four hits. The A's have committed one error. 
The Yankees, through four, have stranded eight base runners. The A's have stranded four. Tremendous baseball tradition. When they were the Philadelphia Athletics. Won World Championships way back in 1910, 11, 13, 29, and 30. Moved on from the Kansas City A's under Charlie Finley. The Oakland A's, or athletics if you will, won five consecutive Western Division Championships for World Champions in 72, 73, and 74. Matt Keogh, who's thrown a lot of pitches, he's had some shoulder problems or stiffness for the latter part of the season. Winfield, the hitter. Moves him off the plate. One ball. Winfield has lined out to left. Hit the short. A throwing error by Pichlow. He got as far as third base. Breaking ball. Hangs inside. 2-0. Keo, whose father, we told you, Marty, played in the major leagues. He was signed as an infielder by the A's, spent a few years, was moved to a pitcher, played shortstop as an amateur player. Two balls and one strike to Dave Winfield. Art Fowler, the man that Keo gives credit Having turned him around, he said he taught me how to win. Art Fowler, who pitched professionally at the age of 48. He impressed one thing upon all these young Oakland A's, throw strikes. He got it in on him, left field, Ricky Henderson to the warning track. He's got it. One out. Well, we asked Matt Teo about Billy Mark and about Art Fowler and what the turnaround was in his pitching career. Well, in 1979, I lost 17 baseball games. Our team wasn't good and I wasn't good. And that was just the facts of life. I had to make some small adjustments on my own. And then Billy Martin and Art Fowler came over here and taught me one of the toughest things to do in life, and that is to be a consistent winner. And it's something that a lot of people want to do, but they often don't prepare themselves to do. And I'm glad they both came over here and helped me do it. Well, he turned his... 2 and 17 a record around to 16 and 13 the following year. One ball, no strikes with one out. Bobby Mercer. One and one. No score in the ball game or the top of the fifth. Mercer, a late replacement in case you tune in late for Reggie Jackson, who is scheduled to be the DH. With that calf muscle. Did not allow Reggie to go. One ball, one strike, one out. One and two. Well, let me check that. Scoreboard's got two and one, but I could have sworn I saw New Decker's right arm go up. Now, nah, two and two. Talking about Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson, I think, and he hasn't really come out and said it publicly, would like to come back out to California. He's mentioned becoming a member of the Dodgers if the Yankees do not re-sign him. There's Reggie. Ron Guidry with a mustache in front of Reggie. Scheduled to pitch tomorrow if there is a game number four. Two balls, two strikes, one out. But if the Yankees do not sign Reggie, I would not be surprised one bit if he didn't end up becoming a first baseman for the Oakland A's. Three and two, one out to Mercer. There are two outs. Now the Oscar Gamble, who walked, lined out second baseman Dave McKay. The Yankees have had runners in scoring position throughout the first four innings. They have stranded eight. Breaking ball misses, one ball, no strikes to Gamble. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> no score, top of the fifth. 
He took something off a breaking pitch. 2 0, left on base. See it on your screen. Yankees 8, A's 4. Neither Ricchetti nor Keo has had a 3 up, 3 down inning, although the double play in the fourth, only three hitters came on to face Ricchetti. 2 0. Three balls, no strikes. Each team with four base hits. A's with one air, no score. The Yankees have dominated with their bats in games one and two. Went into this ball game with a 370 plus team batting average. Take it all away, three and one. They play Oscar Gamble to Paul. Billy Martin has set his defense. On occasion, he will shift them around. Situations and counts. Three and one. He may have a cut if he gets his pitch. He loses Gamble. So. Joe DiMaggio. He just never changes. In fact, wasn't Joe DiMaggio, weren't Billy Martin and Joe DiMaggio roommates in Billy's rookie year? Yep. That face right there, Tony, belongs on Mount Rushmore in a DiMaggio profile. And there's Martin. And I don't mean this as any kind of ethnic slur, but affectionately, Billy still calls Joe DiMaggio Dago in a loving fashion. He better. Big Dago, you bet. Two outs. Nettles bounces in front. Smothered by Newman. Snap throw. Good play by Moore. Good play by Newman. Preventing the runner from going into scoring position. Gamble's not too sure what he wants to do. He starts for second and says, no, with my legs, I better make a U-turn. And back he goes. One ball, no strikes with two outs. Gamble's at first and the top of the fifth with no score. The Yankees, should they win today? They go on to the World Series. Play either Montreal or the Dodgers. Foul out of play by Nettles. Speaking of Montreal and the Dodgers, how about that game Burris gave those Expos? Well, Burris, a former Yankee, former Cub. Tomorrow in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Montreal, the Expos versus the Dodgers. Under Jim Fanning. What a matchup in pitching, too. Rice. D. Rogers should be a dandy. One and one the count. Hamill at first for the Yankees. The defensive alignment, if we look at Gamble and move back and see the second baseman, will show you how they treat Greg Nettles. On that picture, you can't, can't see the second, second baseman because he's about he's 10, right 12 feet on the outfield grass in right field. Now you see McKay. Look at that. Two and one to Nettles. He's lined out and grounded out. Three and one. Nettles in the first inning with the bases loaded. Lined the ball at Armist made a nice catch. Nice catch right on the foul line. Right field. Looks like an eye formation in football the way they're lined up. Right field is right behind him. Big gap in left center field. You look at it right there. Now you can see Bassetti way over toward right center. Three balls, one strike, two outs. He popped it up in the infield. Plus. Got it for out number three. The Yankees, their five innings, now stand nine base runners. So we'll go to the bottom of the fifth here in Oakland. With the score, New York nothing, Oakland nothing. Due up, Newman, Piccolo, and Henderson. Reggie Jackson has been dubbed Mr. October. He's not in today's ball game, but we asked him to tell us what the mystique of Reggie Jackson is. I don't know, Tony. I just do the best of my ability to co try to concentrate. Uh, my talents and my abilities are, and my physical and mental abilities are all God-given. Uh, at this time of the year, I try to get... Uh, my man will or my ability to reason by man out of the way and allow God to use my abilities and let them flow freely and get the most out of them. 
That was not Socrates nor Plato. That was Reggie Jackson, the philosopher. A very intelligent man, and he can put words together with the best of them. We're in the bottom of the fifth. No score. Rigetti, who has thrown 83 pitches through four innings, facing Jeff Newman. One strike. Newman struck out in the second. Rigetti has struck out three. One and one. He has walked two. One and one. This is inside. Two balls and one strike. They play Newman pretty much as a pull hitter in the infield. Where they give him the third base line. See Newman a little bit shaded with a hole. He just slices it foul, shatters his bat, which is unusual, Joe, because in the outfield, they have their center fielder, Mumphrey, playing him well, just about straight up, straight away. There's your defense. Oh, he's lined up with... Bottom of the fifth, no score. Ricketti, who has thrown 83 pitches through four innings, facing Jeff Newman. One strike... Newman struck out in the second. Rigetti has struck out three. One and one. He has walked two. One and one. This is inside. Two balls and one strike. They play Newman pretty much as a pull hitter in the infield. Where they give him the third base line. See Newman a little bit shaded with a hole. He just slices it foul, shatters his bat, which is unusual, Joe, because in the outfield, they have their center fielder, Mumphrey, playing him well, just about straight up, straight away. There's your defense. Always line up with the center fielder. You can see him right in the middle of your screen, just directly behind second base. And I'll tell you, when you come to the ballpark, that's the guy you key on to see how they're pitching because they'll be moving him. And then late in the ball game, that'll even switch depending on the kind of stuff the pitcher's able to maintain. So what they're telling you with that defensive alignment, the Yankees, that if it's a ground ball, he ordinarily pulls it to the left side. He hits the ball in the air, pretty much hits straight away. Two balls, two strikes, no outs. No score in the game, bottom of the fifth. We're in Oakland for game number three. Should the Yankees win, they go to the World Series. If Oakland win, they'll still have to win two more. But high in the air to left field. He just got under it. Winfield retires Newman. Watching Winfield catch that ball, you can't help but think of the great play he made on not only Armas, but that one on DeSensei. And I thought Pinella really put in focus mm -hmm. with a great line. He said Winfield is not an outfielder. He's a goaltender. He was a great rebounder at the University of Minnesota. In case you hadn't heard before, drafted by three professional sports, the ABA, the NBA, the NFL, and, of course, baseball, which made him a wealthy man. Oh, what out? Never. <laughs> Breaking ball hangs high from Rigetti. One ball, no strikes. Rigetti hasn't had his outstanding stuff. He's struggled with his control. We have not seen, as far as I can tell at this point, and we can't always show up here, that great straight change he has. There's a fastball. Fouled off by Piccolo. One and one. Rigetti, not only this important game from him, but Rigetti was born and raised in this area, San Jose. So his relatives, a lot of friends... Are watching it here tonight. He really jammed it. We're getting to Watson. Two outs. Talk There's Winfield in left field. We were talking about that play. It's one of those you'll always remember. This is the one in Yankee Stadium. Up he goes. Almost into the stands. 
Could have been called for goaltending. When you're playing hockey, he saved one. Here it goes. They're trying to get them going. They do it more so when Henderson gets up than anybody else. Ricky Henderson has singled, stolen a base. He has walked and stolen a base. And there it is again. They're popping up section by section. And as they say go, they sit down. The next section pops up. That's great. Two outs. Man, you just saw in the picture the man who orchestrates that. McGetty will face Henderson. With no score in the ball game. One ball. Then two balls, one strike with two outs. <laughs> Taught by Donald Meyer, the old half step. Three balls and one strike to Ricky Henderson. The way these two pitchers are going. A Henderson walk, a stolen base, a base hit. You never know. That could be it. We got a long way to go, though, as we are only in the fifth. Three and two now to Henderson. Henderson had six home runs during the regular season. He had a sensational year last year in almost every department. That's a good study uh, that stance he has, a front foot. He had a good cut at that ball. Joe, there's a three and one pitch. Ray Henderson's doing one thing, sitting on a fastball, and the ball still, even though it was a good cut, got into him a little bit. He's still a little late. Three and two, two outs from McGetty. Foul on a play. Well, here we go again. Around the Oakland Alameda mezzanine section. That'll drive the cameraman wild. Now, did Henderson hurt himself, too? This is unbelievable. Henderson has gone back now. They're looking at his left wrist. He, on that last swing, hurt his hand. Joe Romo's out again. Billy Martin is there. Cliff Johnson was hurt in game one. He missed game two. You missed it earlier. Dwayne Murphy swung and... Pulled or injured something in his left side. And now Henderson, what is it, his wrist or the back of his hand, Joe? Looked like his wrist. Meanwhile, Nettles came in to talk to uh, Cerrone. And Rigetti wanted to warm up. He was throwing. There you see the meeting breaking up. Well, Billy doesn't have the bench strength. He has done it basically with four, five, Starting pitchers. He's had rough spots in the bullpen. He has got about four really exciting everyday players who have some power and can steal some couple guys who can steal bases. Rigetti is uh, loosening up. He's not going to get trapped like Ron Davis to where he just stands around and plays spectator. He is throwing the ball to his catcher. There you see him. He's staying loose, which Nick Bremigan said to us in the interview that he could throw as much as he wanted to with the objection game when Johnson finally got in the batter's box the other night that uh, Ron Davis wanted to throw. Well, they are spraying right now. Jerome was with ethyl chloride. A coolant freezes the area to prevent any further swelling. You can see there's some empty seats, but this is a very lively crowd. What other injuries can Billy Martin suffer to this ball club? Watch it here and see if there's any kind of a tip-off. Right there, 
He turned he that wrist up. over, didn't he, Joe? The left At wrist. Bottom hand when he turned it over, and he grabbed it right there, so that was an indication that it was a little more than just a missed swing. And this crowd, meantime, they're just entertaining themselves, and that's the way it should be at the ballpark. And this guy really works it. I mean, such power he has, he just directs section by section, and you see it. It's a marvelous thing. Down below, they're all going bonkers. He really loves it. Look at him. He's got them all going. Keep in mind, there's nothing happening right now. They're just entertaining themselves and doing a great job of it. They're just having fun at the old ballpark. This is all that's happening. They're working on Henderson. The two outfielders are standing talking to each other. Rigetti is warming up. Well, uh, you got to believe that. That's George. That's all I know him by George and crazy George. But... The way Mr. Haas, the owner, and Roy Eisenhardt, his son-in-law, have orchestrated the commercials you saw on Brian Gumbel's pregame show, the fun type of commercials to complete, compete with the San Francisco Giants across the bay, and the enthusiasm and the spirit and the fun they've created have brought a lot of these people back to the ballpark alongside with Billy Martin and, of course, some exciting Oakland A's players Infielders are warming up now. You see them. They're throwing Billy, medals. Billy's finally come out once again, and he's talking. He said, listen, either you can't play or you can't. You're hurt. You tell me. I can't help you. So Henderson is going to try it. Situation, two outs, three and two count on Henderson. We're getting the pitcher. No score in the ball game. We're the bottom of the fifth. Each team with four base hits. Now, George is shaking his head. You might recall in game one, stalling tactics. Right there when you get a guy sprayed, you get the wrist taped and the whole bit. And you could see on our replays, which apparently Mr. Steinbrenner couldn't. He's hurting or he isn't going to butt on three and two because he's out. He's up. No stalling tactics whatsoever involved there. So he's that's it. Got Davis warming up, Tony. He's going to, looks like stick somebody in the ball game. No, they weren't stalling that time, George. The kid's hurt. Wish you could have seen our replay. So, three up, three down in the bottom of the fifth for the Oakland A's. There is no score in the ball game. Keel will take the mound for the sixth. And do up for the Yankees. It'll be Watson, Rick Cerrone, Willie Randolph, the 7, 8, 9 hitters. So, we've got some changes here in Oakland. First off, Mike Davis went out to left field, and then he left the field. Now, Mike Heath has gone into left field for the Oakland A's. In center field, we told you earlier that Dwayne Murphy was injured in the first inning of pull muscle. He had to leave. Massetti came in. We finished off the strikeout. Armas is in right field. So two-thirds of what some consider the best outfield in baseball has been injured in this ballgame. No score. Top of the sixth. Bob Watson facing Keel. Jumps on the first pitch, right field. Harvest going back to the warning track. Possibility that that was a home run in Yankee Stadium also, but not here. Would have been close. One out. has control of it all the way. You can just see him put up his hand saying, I got it, and I know I have plenty of room as he gets on that warning track and makes an easy play. You wonder with the long time spent on the bench by Keogh with some shoulder problems that he's had recently. Getting a little cooler out here now since the sun has set a little while back, and he may stiffen up. We saw it happen to Norris in game one. His elbow stiffened out, and he had to leave the ball game after a couple of pitches. One ball, no strikes with one out. Rick Cerrone, the hitter for the Yankees. One and one. Yankees, through five innings, have left five, nine runners on base. The A's, through five, have left four. Curveball. One hop of the clutch. who 
was an infielder at one time, converted to shortstop. You'll see him look down at that foot. And if you are adherent of the Tom Seaver, Tom Seaver said in one telecast we watch out in the West Coast, Joe and I, where when he looked down or looked away, he formed a mental picture of where he's going to throw the ball. We're not certain if that's what Keo does. Two outs, Willie Randolph. Randolph is single, got as far as third. On board in the fourth also with a fielder's choice. Now he is shaking his hand. Keo is shaking his right hand, which at times can be an indication the pitcher is tired. You can see he's trying to loosen himself up. his reaction he knows it's gone he doesn't hit that many but he knew that one was touched off and Mike Ferraro the first base coach just confirms the feeling as you see Randolph rounding first base and it's one to nothing here in the sixth so now it'll be Jerry Mumphrey the leadoff hitter ball up high from Keel Willie Randolph during the regular season hit just two home runs Art Fowler Billy Martin, Steve McCaddy on the bench. But there was no doubt about that, Joe. I mean, that ball went back in 15, 16 rolls. It did, and here comes Art Fowler. He wants to talk to his uh, pitcher and to his catcher, and Piccolo is coming in. Well, I really think he wants to talk to his pitcher more than anything else to see if that arm which he, and that hand which he was shaking has stiffened up. We're at that point of the ball game where you're in the sixth, and should Rigetti begin to fade at all. In fact, right now, somebody is trotting down to the Yankee bullpen. It could be Davis. We don't know. But you get to looking to the bullpen for the goose and for Davis. Tony, if you are a statistics nut, the Yankees in 1981, 45 and 21 in games that they scored first. Well, Randolph got him on the board with two outs in the sixth. Popped up in the infield by Mumphrey. Clutz yelled off by Piccolo. Three outs, but Randolph, a one ball, no strike pitch with two outs. It's a long home run to left to give the Yankees a one to nothing lead. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth here in Oakland. With the score one to nothing. It'll be Bosetti, Johnson, and Armas for Oakland. It's like a diamond in the night, isn't it? Oakland Alameda Coliseum with the Yankees one, Oakland nothing. The Goose, it is not yet quite his time of the game, but it is coming. Rigetti will face Pacetti, Armas, Hunt, Gossage. He went through that Midwest League a few years back, and there were some pretty good players there when he was the property of the White Sox. He and Terry Forster, Bucky Dent, the roommates and teammates on those ball clubs. It saved three ball games in the Milwaukee miniseries, Milwaukee Yankees. He saved game one of this series, one and one. Popped up right side. Randolph will be hollered off by Gamble, one out. Tony, the official word on Henderson, a bruise in the left wrist bone while swinging the bat. Man on the mound right now for the Yankees. Dave Rigetti had two wins in that mini series against Milwaukee for the Eastern Division title. One starting and one in relief. Another one of the walking wounded. Cliff Johnson is playing with a bruised hip. He has walked and popped out to first. One to nothing. Yankees over the A's. No pitch. Johnson steps out. He requested time. Given to him by Jerry Ludecker, the home plate umpire. One ball from Rigetti. Now Nettles 
Going to the sixth inning, crowding the line a little more at third base for Johnson to try and prevent a double. Been off the line for him earlier in the ball game. He's after a bad pitch. He's looking for a home run, and he's hurt. Johnson knows his job, either he or Armis, if they're going to do it with one swing and have to take McGetty deep or somebody deep to tie it up. There's not a whole lot of power left in this lineup. Murphy gone. And Johnson's 568 career hits, 231, have been for extra bases. It's about four out of every ten. Little late on a Rigetti fastball. Once more to right field. Oscar Gamble for out number two. Rigetti pushing this Oakland club closer and closer to Goose Gossage time. Should he be called out? He's thrown a lot of pitches. Billy Martin, who in many people's book is the manager of the year in the American League. We have to consider Ralph Hout. The Boston Red Sox, two outs. He just blew it by, Armas. Just in on the fist, tied him up. He's just letting it out now, feeling that he may only have to go one or maybe two more innings, and then Bob Lovett will go to the pad. One to nothing, Yankees over the A's, nine hits in the ball game. Yankees have five, he's just blown it by arms. One or two. Tony, it's interesting how the Yankees got him too. The Texas Rangers with Juan Benicas, Paul Mirabella, Mike Griffith, and Grim Greg Jemison for Sparky Lyle, Mike Heath, Domingo Ramos, Larry McCall, and Dave Rasich. What a deal for the Yankees. He got him on a curveball in a similar situation. He goes fastball, fouled off. Armas. Rigetti, right now, a very important man trying to get through the number four hitter. And then he'll go to guys who are capable of hitting home runs. Down farther from the fifth spot on for the A's, but it is not that likely. There's Gossage. I don't think his blood starts pumping or his heart starts pumping until about the seventh. I'll tell you, that bullpen, the statistics on the bullpen, something has been thrown on a field and time is calling left field. Frisbee, huh? What a is Frisbee. It? I hope it, yeah. No. Unfortunately, it's a bottle. And listen to the crowd. This is great. They've been having fun all night the way crowds should have fun. They've been cheering the opposition, rooting their home team, and they just reacted and booed when that bottle was thrown. Rigetti to Armas, the cleanup hitter. Yankees won. A's nothing. A Randolph home run. One and two pitch. Check swing. Fouled off. Armas with 22 home runs during the regular season. Been somewhat handcuffed in this series. Came up with the bases loaded in the three and a one first game. Two and two. Armas in the first inning, grounded into a double play. Short second first, and he is struck out. Rigetti has four strikeouts in the ball game when you count the three and two bunt attempt by Henderson. He has walked two. Too high. Three and two to Armas. throw nothing to fastballs this plate appears by Armas fly ball right field and drive Campbell to the warning track Armas saying maybe in Yankee Stadium but it's three up three down Gamble with all three putouts in the sixth we'll go to the seventh here in Oakland in game number three New York one Oakland nothing there are your due ups for the Yankees Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek here at Oakland Alameda Coliseum along with you really enjoying a pitcher's battle. Great shots being provided and it's one to nothing here. Yankees on a home run by Willie Randolph. One run, five hits, no errors for New York. No runs, four hits and one error for the Oakland A's. Keo all the way 
as we look down at this field is in great shape just marvelous shape Keogh will be facing Milburn, Winfield, and Mercer. Well, Larry Milburn has done pretty well with the bat. Usually, they're in postseason play, there's a player who comes out of nowhere. Well, uh, first of all, I, when I came over to the Yankees, I realized that they got me for a, a boy that Bucky or Willie got hurt, and happened that Bucky got hurt, and I knew that the responsibility of playing shortstop laid on me, and I just went out there and tried to do the best job possible day in and day out, and uh, I think I've done a good job. Understatement of the year, Milburn, a super sub, nine hits in his last 14 times at bat, a hot shot, Pichelo, good play, got him! Beautiful play by the shortstop, Pichelo, here it is, he really had to get something on it, Tony. He almost got handcuffed when he didn't backhand the ball, but he shows a strong arm. Well, those hits don't tell the Milburn tale. He was almost down once again. He's been on eight times in these three ball games. He slaps the ball the, the right of Picciolo. Hit it hard. Moore has shown a pretty good level over first base, too, with that big, long stretch. You gotta like him. Here's Winfield, Yankee bullpen. A little bit of stirring. And what an awesome bullpen it is. That's Ron Davis. Yankee bullpen, an earned run average of 2.26. Winfield. Strike one. 1981, they gave up 70 earned runs in 278 in the third innings. One strike. Winfield. 0 for 3. He doesn't get it. Two strikes. Keogh really has had a nice assortment of pitches. He's thrown quite a few pitches. The Yankees have had pressure on him. That was a big breaking ball. He took something off that had Winfield in front and also the top of the ball. He's thrown a screwball on occasion. Had a pretty lively fastball. Moved it around. He's Tony, you, a pitcher. Tony, you talked about it. You just wonder if the delay affected him. Because it was right after that that Randolph hit the home run. one of those sinkers. That's one of those sinkers that they talk about that is suspect. Irrigated fastball is a new term. Here is Bobby Mercer. Mercer, he walked in the first inning. He bounced out in the third, struck out in the fifth. We'll show you the pitch that Winfield struck out on. To this point, the <laughs> fastball from Keogh has been taking off. You can see if, in fact, that was a doctored baseball, what it might look like. It's like a knuckleball, but thrown with the speed of a fastball. Baby really went down. Ron Davis has put on his jacket and is walking towards the Yankee bench now. You just wonder there. You see him. If he's going to be brought in... Joe Louis Rigetti pitched that sixth inning. He was looking for a little more effort on every pitch. He may have been told, listen, this may be your last inning, so get three outs and just go as hard as you can. Right now, it's three balls and no strikes on Mercer. The Yankee relievers in 81 inherited 133 runners and only 41 of them scored, which means that they stranded seven out of ten. You can see why they go to their bullpen in a hurry. Strike one, three balls and one strike. With Ron Davis and the Goose Gossage down there, they can erase a lot of your mistakes. Man next to the Goose, Frazier, is right. too. What a job he did yesterday for them. 3 1 pitch. It's popped up behind home plate, straight back. No one can get it. It's a full count. Three balls and two strikes and two outs. Bobby Mercer. One to nothing is the score. We're in the top half of the seventh inning. The Yankees. Trying to make it three straight, which will send them right into the World Series. Montreal and the Dodgers are tied at one apiece, and tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, you'll see a pitcher's battle. Royce against Steve Rogers. Royce gave us one of the best ball games we've seen all year. That lively fastball. 
game two for the Western Division Championships in the Astrodome. Here's a payoff pitch to Bobby Mercer. Base hit, center field. Mercer singles the center field. He's on. And that brings up Oscar Gamble. And the Oakland bullpen, fans still having fun out here. The Oakland bullpen gets busy. Well, a couple pitchers getting up. A right hander is Beard, the left hander is Underwood. Mercer a lead at first base. Gamble waiting. Oscar's 0 for 1. He has walked twice. Takes it outside and it's ball one. Well, I hope an old friend of ours, Tony, is watching tonight and feeling better. Red Jones, the umpire, American League umpire, great storyteller. What was the one about you Speed? tell us, sir? Yeah. It's a great well, line. I love it. <laughs> It's outside. They talk about velocity and throwing the ball hard and radar guns. Old Red used to talk about Bob Feller. He said his fastball was so fast he could throw it through a car wash and not get a drop on it. That's pretty fast. <laughs> Hope you're feeling better. Good umpire, great guy. Two balls, no strikes. Gamble. One and nothing. The Yankees leading the A's. It's high and no strikes. Keogh is giving them a tough game as we look at the Oakland bench. There you see manager Billy Martin, Boyer, Joe Romo. Keogh had the Yankees shut out for five innings. And then with two outs in the sixth, Randolph a home run. It's a strike. Well, we alluded a while ago to the possibility that one pitch that struck out Winfield might have been doctored. We can't tell from up here. Well, on the monitor you can, I think, when the ball does something erratic. We may get into that a little more after Oscar Campbell. Should he get on base? the ball he wants to check the ball that ball did some funny things and uh, Keo has just rubbed it up and he's turned his back and oh now you want to oh, see the ball it's goodness. all gone that was a little obvious Matt <laughs> he got the ball back walked off the second base umpire Darwood Merrill was looking right in his face Oscar <laughs> say come on now watch, watch this ball watch it break down Certainly, that's not a screwball. They're saying he's throwing a screwball now, but that's a little hard for a screwball. That's a wet sinker. It's, uh, <laughs> it's tough for Keogh to pitch in Arizona. That ball dry up halfway to home plate. <laughs> there goes the runner. Walked him. Well, the man coming in right now is Greg Nettles. We asked him if he suspected that the Oakland staff throws spitballs. Norris, if he does, but a couple of the other guys had in uh, in the past games we played them. But still, it's a it's nothing more than a good sinker. And if they don't get it down where it belongs, it's a it's a it's an easy pitch to hit. If they get it up around the belt, then uh, they they're going to wish they hadn't thrown it because uh, it's just a, a spitter that stays up is uh, probably the easiest pitch in baseball to hit. <laughs> Everybody, Joe, uh, still refers to it as a spitter, but I think with the uh, the jellies and the Vaselines and the hair tonic being used and the soap, as you mentioned earlier, soap put on the thing and slippery elm and the grommets and some old style gloves that pitchers still like that are sharp and they can cut it and belt buckles. It's a lot more than saliva. Sandpaper. It's about the same as it always was, though, isn't it? Hasn't changed much. Slow curveball, ball one. Every time I hear that, see the psychology of the hitter changes as we look at Mercer at first and uh, second and Gamble at first. The hitter will usually take the pitch and turn to the umpire and ask him about it, and the umpire will call it a strike. And I always remember the great Stan Musial's line when Preacher Rowe was supposed to throw a spitball. McKay's coming in now. He wants to talk to uh, his pitcher. I enjoyed a, a, an article in the New York newspaper. Uh, it was a collaboration on the articles by Dave Anderson and Red Smith, and they called Burley Grimes in Holcomb, Wisconsin. 
talked about him being the last spitball pitcher to legally throw it. Martin's out. Maybe Keo had signaled out to McKay or someone or somebody suspected his arm is stiffing up. He's having a little problem. Musial said about Rose spitball as we watch this meeting, he said, don't worry about it. Hit the dry side. Of course, Stan could do that. o'clock tomorrow night, Montreal and the Los Angeles Dodgers. There you see it. Steve Rogers against Jerry Royce. That series is tied at one apiece. Be a dandy ball game. And the possibly possibility looms that we may have the first International World Series. A Canadian Club American Club. The Dodgers will have a lot to say about that. Two balls and no strikes on Greg Nettles. He flied to right, bounced out, and popped the third baseman. All right, two outs. We're in the seventh inning. Yankees are leading one to nothing. Nettles is a good triple shooter. He'll be looking for a particular pitch in a particular spot. If he gets it, he'll show you a pretty good cut. He got it. He had a good cut. He got it played perfectly in the gap. Did not score in the top of the seventh. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning to score here. It is New York one. The Oakland A's nothing. They'll be setting up Clutz, Moore, and McKay. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek here at the Oakland Alameda Coliseum. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Game three. Should the Yankees maintain the one nothing lead, they will go to the World Series. As the Montreal Expos and the Dodgers will battle it out tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Rodgers against Royce. Yankees won the first two, leading one to nothing. And Newman here in the bottom of the eighth. He's got power. Any sign of trouble on the part of Davis at this stage, and the goose will pop up in a hurry in the bullpen. Strike one, Davis. We have a pinch hitter coming out of the open dugout. In the on deck circle, Keith Drumright. There you see him. Davis coming sidearm. Joe, I think Ron Davis feels he has something to prove because some people said that the stalling tactics works against him and it got rattled. He got rattled and he walked Johnson, was removed from the ball game. So he wants to finish. He doesn't want the goose to come and relieve him. That's fouled on the right field line. I can't say that I blame him. He's been too good a pitcher to remember, be remembered for the 81 season for a stalling tactic. He's the guy, in case our fans didn't see the first ball game, that you mentioned he'd like a new stat put in the uh, record sheet. Stat sheet's a hole. Doesn't get credit for the saves because the goose gets him off. That's foul back. A nephew of a former major leaguer, Red Murph. Ron Davis. Another great trade by the Yankees. Exchange for Ken Holzman, who's now out of baseball. And here is Davis, one of the mainstays of the Yankee bullpen. Two strike pitch. Did he go around? Wow. Yes, he did, says New Decker. So it's a strikeout. What a fastball. That's Marty Springstead, who is ready to help New Decker, but New Decker threw that right hand up. This is that four seam fastball that Stan Williams taught him. Davis with the two saves, his ball sunk. And Williams said to him, just before he left the Yankees, he said, you throw hard enough that you can make that fastball ride and hop. Go to four saves, make use of them all, and that's what you just saw. Look at Cerrone saying to, about drum right, watch the bunch, you never know. Nettles is in close at third and near the line. Drum right makes the first pitch. It's high and it's ball one. Drum right. 1980 hit 286 and 81 Tacoma. Two balls and no strikes. Paid attendance here 47,302, but there's 50,513 in the ballpark. Fastball, and you can hear that ball hitting that big pillow that Cerrone's using. And you have to have a good fastball as we see this crowd. Make a glove like that pop. Bouncing ball. First base. Watson steps on the bag. 
too easy out. And I tell you, this Yankee pitching, Tony, since that walk in the third inning, have really done the job. Well, he's set down 17 in a row. Now, there was a single back in the fourth, but then a double play. So there was a base runner, but at 17, goes way back to the walk and stolen base by Henderson in the third. Look who's up. Look who's up in the Yankee bullpen. This is Mike Heath, two for five with a run scored, a 400 average. He's playing left field tonight. He's been a valuable man for these Oakland A's. Catching, outfield, there he is. The Goose Gossage with Jeff Torborg. Wild out of play. Joe, you were talking about those 3,000 people from 47 that paid 50,000. Mr. Roy Eisenhart, the owner, set up what he calls a handicap center. And it is trilingual. They have provide radios with a handicapped and blind to hear the ball game. And that may be part of that section. And they gave those seats away. They're really get it, getting this ball club re-involved with the community. Marvelous ownership. They've really done a job here. They've turned it completely around. Come to the ballpark and have fun. Merchandise it well. They've played well. And they're still battling here. 2-1 pitch. Heath takes it low. 3-1. It's 1-0. The Yankees are leading. In the bottom of the eighth, a home run by Randolph, the only scoring. Davis, two outs, nobody on. He had to get off the mound. There you see the owners, the owner's box right there. Out of the middle, Mr. Walter Haas. Foul back, and it's three balls and two strikes. Full count, two outs. I should clarify that. I think it's Mr. Haas. He's a little bit shady there. And we couldn't really get those lights up in there. Mike Heath waiting. Ron Davis. Bob Watson had him played perfectly. Races to the bag. Wins the race. And it's 1-2-3 for the Oakland A's in the eighth inning. So at the end of eight full innings here in game three, it's the Yankees 1, Oakland nothing. If you're with us for games 1 and 2 in Yankee Stadium, a lot of talk about Billy Ball, Reggie, George Steinbrenner. We talked to Bob Levin about it. Well, uh, I kind of like it that way. I prefer it to uh, let them have all the, the limelight or whatever they want. But uh, I guess it, the two mystery guests in New York were the owners of the Open Ball Club and myself. And uh, I hope it just stays that way. <laughs> Only Bob Lemon can say it so well. Everybody's favorite, Bob Lemon. Fred Stanley's gone in to play shortstop for Oakland. The two mystery guests, the Oakland ownership and me, says Bob Lemon. He's a philosopher in his own quiet way, in his own quite strong way. Two balls, no strikes. Mumphrey. Humphrey struck out. First pitch of the ball game, he was really decked. Came back in the second to get a base hit and then walked and popped up. He always done a good job. Trailing though, one to nothing. There's three balls and no strikes. strike. As you look ahead to the bottom of the ninth inning, it'll be Bossetti, Johnson, and Armas. The two men that can hit the ball out of the ballpark will be coming up. Mumphrey draws the base on balls, and it brings up Milburn. In their own quiet way, Mumphrey and Milburn have really done a job. That's the sixth walk given up by Keogh. Other meeting on the mound as we look at Jerry Mumphrey. Milburn, rather. 
Looking down at the bullpen. The open bullpen is busy. Yankee bullpen is busy. That's the Underwood is the left-hander and Beard is the right-hander. And the Goose is, is busy down in the right field section. And coming in close to third is Gross as Milburn waits. Humphrey gets back. Oh, may have hit him. <laughs> Call time. He was off the bag, but he had called time. Humphrey made sure of that. Spencer said, I didn't know. Spring says, oh, I know you didn't know. You're too nice a guy. But you'll try it anyhow, right? Spencer laughed, and it's all over. They're looking for the bunt. And it's bunted. Right back to Keel. He started to go to second. Dropped by McKay. Everybody's safe. McKay drops that ball. Neal starts to go to second. And now time is called. They want to look at the ball. So Milburn is on at first base. Mumphrey stays at second base. And Billy Martin is coming out to talk to his young pitcher. So the Yankees have base runners at first and second. Nobody out. And they got the third, fourth, and fifth place hitters coming up. Billy's had his bullpen going. It's a one to nothing score. Randolph a home run in the sixth, but now Mumphrey and Milburn are on. They did in that inning what they've been doing this entire series. There you see the left-hander, Underwood, Beard the right-hander, and Altabelli is going out to second base while Martin talks to his pitcher, and he's talking to the base runner, Mumphrey. It's a sacrifice. That's the way the official scores call it. Sacrifice air on the second baseman. Glenn Schwartz and Red Foley, the official scores. Here's the play again now. He bunts the ball. Milburn bunts it right back. Now Keogh starts to go to second. Decides against it. McKay just didn't handle it. May have taken his eye off the ball. Sacrifice air second baseman. Here is Winfield now. Winfield lined hard to the left in the first. Safe on an error in the third. Fly to left in the fifth. Struck out in the seventh. We showed you the goose warming up, and the way he's throwing, he is really airing it out like he'll be brought in. Humphrey at second, Milburn at first, Winfield waiting. Wearing around as if to bunt. Hey, George Jr. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Winfield. It's a strike call. One ball and one strike. Winfield squared around the bunt once again. One ball, one strike. There you see the defense. Trying to bunt it. Doesn't get the job done. It's one ball and two strikes. Winfield a bit disappointed in himself. There you see the replay. At last little move when he moved the bat, that's when he lost it. Bunting, the simple process of catching the ball with the bat. One ball, two strikes. Yeah! Is it a foul tip? It is. The crowd just kind of sitting back now. Billy Martin looking on. In the bottom of the ninth, it'll be Bassetti 
Johnson and Armas as we look at the base runners. Mumphrey is on at second base. Milburn is on at first. One ball, two strikes on Winfield. Coliseum where over 50,000 are in this ballpark. They came here, most of them, I'm sure, to root their favorite ball club, the Oakland A's, to a victory because a defeat tonight and it's all over. Yankees will go to the World Series, but there you see it. Yankees won to nothing. We're in the ninth inning. Underwood has just replaced Keel. We've got a tremendous ovation from this crowd. Base runners at first and second, one man out, and I'm sure that on that Oakland bench, they're saying to themselves, without really putting down Willie Randolph to say a home run by Randolph, it would be bad enough. Winfield, Jackson, if he were playing, Gamble, Nettles, Watson, Cerrone. Randolph has done a good job, and there you see the Oakland bench. He's done a good job defensively getting on base. He has put a big number on the scoreboard tonight. Underwood, four and six on the year. And Lou Pinella is coming on as a pinch hitter. He hit a big home run in Yankee Stadium. Randolph in 1981 hit two home runs all year. And he has a big one tonight. Pinella. Pinella two for four in the series. He takes a strike. One home run, three runs batted in, a run scored. Billy Martin trying to keep that bench alive. In the ninth, Bassetti, Johnson, and Armas, the three scheduled hitters. Pinella lines a single to left field. Here comes Mumphy around. The throw is going to be in time. They've got it into it. Manella hits the ball hard, but Mike Heath really a good throw. He gets that ball in a hurry, and Newman has a nice big hop, a room service pass. Placing an injured Henderson, and he makes a fine play to cut down a big run. So, we've got Barry Foot coming on as we give you a reminder about tomorrow night the Los Angeles Dodgers against the Montreal Expos. And it'll be Steve Rogers for the Expos, Jerry Royce for the Dodgers. That series is all tied at one apiece. Expos a big lift on a great performance by. Burris, and now Barry Foote will come on. He's a pinch hitter for Gamble. This will be the first appearance for him in the series. And it's outside, ball one. Milburn at second base. Vanilla at first. Foote lines one to right field. Armas, good arm. Here comes the throw. They cut it. Oh, yeah, they stop him. I tell you, this Oakland outfield, two-thirds of it out, but yet Armas, a good throw, 
stops. Milburn in third. Here's the throw once again. It looked like Milburn was going to try to score a big turn at third base and then out to belly very wisely and already held him up. You see out to belly in the background or he would have been a dead duck. Here comes Milburn rounding third. He's looking for the sign and whoops put the brakes on. And we're going to have a pinch runner at first base for Barry Foot. Bases are loaded. Bobby Brown. So the Yankees two base hits walk in an air. But they have not put another number on the scoreboard. It is still one to nothing and the goose is coming in from the bullpen. It looks like he'll be the pitcher for the Yankees. Pinella's ball was well hit to left field. He's made a great play at the plate. Barry Foote hit the ball hard to right field. And Armas his arms. Kept Milburn at third. So now it's Greg Nettles who's 0 for 4. Two men out. Ball one. Two men out. Bases loaded. Nettles the batter, one to nothing. A home run by Randolph, the only score. That came in the sixth to give the Yankees a one-nothing lead. Bottom of the ninth, as we look at Oakland bench, it'll be Bossetti, Johnson, and Armas. Second, third, and fourth place hitters. Curveball, it misses, and it's two balls and no strikes. Underwood in relief. Keo, what a job he did. There you see the base runners. Milburn, Pinella, Bobby Brown. There's a strike. Nettles can't believe it. You be the umpire from your living room. Nettles thought it was inside, obviously, but it may have caught the corner. Jerry Newdecker right on top of the play. 2-1 pitch. Like two. The crowd behind the A's dugout standing up, rooting them. Foul ball. Count remains at two balls and two strikes. 50,513 in the ballpark. Base is loaded. Swinging towards the right field line is what Billy Martin was wanting. Listen to the crowd. Mike Ferraro, the first base coach, retrieves it. Count remains, two balls, two strikes, bases loaded. Ninth inning, Yankees one, Oakland nothing. Game three, Yankees win it, they go to the World Series. It's as simple as all that.
Misjudged by Bassetti. Can't get it. Three runs will score. Nettles has himself a double and a new record. The Yankees have a good-sized lead. And look at the reaction on the bench. They feel that that nailed it down right there. So, Bassetti, who appeared to turn the wrong way, and now you have to think about would Murphy have been able to make that play in center field? The Yankees on the three RBIs by Nettles have taken a four to nothing lead. And Bob Watson takes a low ball one. Bassetti tries to get it and turned the wrong way over the outstretched glove. A line drive right at the second baseman, McKay, ends the inning, but the Yankees put three runs on the scoreboard, and as we go into the bottom half of the ninth inning, the score here, the Yankees four, the A's nothing, and two up for the Oakland A's in the bottom of the ninth, which could be the last inning of the whole season for him. It'll be Bassetti, Johnson, and Armas. Gossage is the king of the bullpen. Here's what he has to say. Well, as far as our, our bullpen is concerned, I don't think that we have to take a backseat to anyone. Uh, as far as, you know, this series is concerned, in a short series, I think pitching is going to be the main thing. Uh, I look at our pair bullpen as uh, Davis as being the, the big man in that because he allows me to go... Uh, at a sh if, if he goes the two or three innings ahead of me, it allows me to go the eighth and ninth and keeps me strong for the rest of for the remainder of the series. Two strikes on Bassetti. Tell you how strong have they been. I'll give you a statistic in a minute. It'll tell you everything. Fastball is high. Games that they took the lead into the seventh inning in '81, they were 53 and three. Outside in 1980, games that the Yankees took the lead into the seventh inning, they were 77 and two. And it's Davis and the Goose. The Yankee owner, and he just blew that ball right by him. And Bassetti is out on strikes. In the middle of your screen, the Yankee owner, George Steinbrenner, Marsh Samuel standing next to him. Four to nothing is the score here. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Yankees with three runs. In the ninth inning, they've broken it open. And Johnson will have to face the goose. Brown is in right field for the Yankees, and Gossage is on the mound. The only changes. You can hear that ball pop. Gossage faced 20 batters in the division series against Milwaukee. Retired 17. He's got four saves in postseason play. Three against Milwaukee. It's popped up straight back out of play. And it's two quick strikes. Billy Martin looking on. They battle hard, these Oakland A's. Tonight, injuries to Henderson, to Murphy. Look at the Yankees poised. They can sense it with the goose out there. Goose is intimidating. He'll put fear into you because of the reaction time. It's so sharp. The goose usually works in a hurry, taking his time. Nettles has got a problem at third base, so the goose is walking over there, the glove. Usually the way the goose pitches, the only glove you worry about is the catcher's mitt. Yankees have outscored Oakland 20 to 3 in this series. They lead 4 to nothing here in the bottom of the ninth, a count of two strikes on Cliff Johnson. Tony Kubek is in the clubhouse. Just missed with the curveball. 
we'll be picking up some of the celebration if there is and with Gossage out there it's almost certain he struck him out big breaking ball two batters two strikeouts and this 1981 season, a great job done by Billy Martin and his Oakland A's comes down to Tony Armas. Yankees all poised on the front step of the dugout. He really overthrew that one. Ball one. Center field coming hard brown. He can't get it. Armas is on. They're still alive. He's battling Oakland A's. And that brings up Wayne Gross. There are two outs. Gross slide to right. He came on as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning. Batting for our clutch. Strike one. Watson, of course, playing way back behind the runner, Armas. Too fast, says Gross, and so time is called. There you see Watson. Foul tip, strike two. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Gossage against Gross. Yankees four, A's nothing. Bottom of the ninth. Look at the Yankees. They are poised. Her ball misses. Oakland A's a tremendous season. Battling all the way. Popped up, short center field. Randolph going out. Yankees win it. And here they come out of the dugout to get the goose. a big celebration just starting the goose goose gossips congratulations rick well thank you bobby I, uh, I mean tony i you know it was, was mentals that did it you know he had, but he's a, such a clutch ball player and uh, i think that this ball club's loaded with clutch players well There's no question about it it looked like the plan was to get rigetti through six or so davis it's been going on like that for how long oh, rigetti was marvelous the second half davis picks him up and you come and finish off Greg, Greg, great Hey, Rich, thank you for coming up. Greg, congratulations. We do not have official word at this time, but you may have been voted the most valuable player in this thing. You had one heck of a series after a struggle. That'd be nice. Uh, after the year I went to last year, and everything, this is perfect. This is perfect. Now we got one more, one more thing to do. There's, there's been a lot of pressure coming through to beating Milwaukee after being up by two, going into the fifth game, and somewhat of a tirade by your owner. Yeah. But it looked like the old veterans came through. Yeah, victory for the veterans. We got together afterwards and said we got to save some of the older guys' jobs, and I hope we did it. Greg, thank you so much. I know we're going to get there with the rest of the team. Thanks, David. Dave. Dave Rigetti, who went a strong six innings, picked up by Davis and then Gossage. Dave, 
The plan must have been, according to what you told me your boss said, was to go a strong six and you did. Yeah, they uh, they wanted to do that. You know, they naturally want to with all the money and they got in the bullpen. Davis and uh, Gossage are awesome. And that's the plan. Go six or seven and let, let them take over. Dave, uh, you're from this area. live in San Jose, just 15, 30 miles away, whatever it is. Somebody said, and I don't know if it's true, is it the first time your father's ever seen you pitch live? Yeah, it is. Uh, Have you spoken to him yet? No, I told him to come in here, but I don't know where he is, but I know he's happy. He's probably scared to death right now. You've had a pretty good last eight games. You pick up two wins against Milwaukee. You pick up a win today. So you've made your salary, haven't you, over this part? Yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, I had some tough no decisions early, but we had already won the first half. We had a chance to be in the playoffs. First half, we had a chance to be in the playoffs, and everybody said, you make your money in the playoffs, and that's what we did. Could you have gone longer if you had to? Oh, sure, Jesus, playoffs. I'll go out there as, as long as they want me to go. What about the, the plans as far as who you might want to play? And it's a long way to go to get uh, to win the World Series. What about which team? Do you have a preference, Dodgers, Montreal? Uh, Dodgers all the way. Yankees, Dodgers is all I've ever thought about all my life, and that's it. Dave, congratulations. Ron, come on up. Ron Davis, I'll tell you, pal, you were dropped down to the number nine spot a while back. But that's got to be as big a home run, well, as anybody's said. Oh, Tony, it felt great. Uh, I've been trying to keep my confidence all year. I've been hitting the crap out of the ball, and uh, thank goodness I got one I can handle, man. I hit it a good ways, boy. It felt great. What, what kind of pitch? Uh, I think it was a high spit ball. No, I mean a high fastball uh -huh. that hit me. But uh, I'll take it anyway. It was great. I felt I feel good. I mean, you look like Reggie Jackson or like uh, Paul hitting that ball. That ball did not just make the fence. That ball went about 15 yeah. rows. When I hit it, I knew I had it all the way. I just threw my hands up, praised the Lord for giving me the power to do it. I feel great. Willie, what about the... the the rest you'll get, your pitching staff will get, and you'll go on to play in the World Series. Uh, any preference as to which team you play, or does it matter at all? Not really. Uh, we're going to take a breather right now and get ourselves together, and uh, it doesn't matter who we play. We've been with the Dodgers before. It might be nice going to Montreal also, but uh, we're so high right now. We play, we'll play anymore, Tony. Congratulations. Good. Thank you. Hey, I, Great I, I, home run. Dad, real quick. Hi, Pops. Way to go. All right. Lum, you got a minute? More of the action from Oakland right after these messages. Nothing. And you're looking at these great...